Blog Talk Radio. What's going on, folks? It's your boy, Long Beach Joe. We back at it again, okay? Listen, we got a lot to talk about, a lot of things going on in the NFL. A lot of moves have been made. Uh, we got to talk about this Jets offensive line. We're going to do some evaluations there, and I want to know your thoughts about some of these, you know what I'm saying, things that I have going on. Also, free agents that the Jets are going to possibly target as well at the offensive line. I want to hear everybody's take. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page, my content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on the Long Beach Joe Show. So without further ado, folks, let's go ahead and get into the show. I am fired up. I'm fired up. And I could not wait to start talking football with everyone. Uh, listen, as well, I'm on iTunes as well. Please go to my iTunes. It's the Long Beach Joe Show. Go over there. Subscribe to my content on there. Um, you know, this will be put out as a podcast as well. So please give me a rating, too, if you could. Also, my YouTube page, if you want to watch me live, for those of you that are on Blog Talk, also live stream during my radio show. Uh, so if you want to check out the live stream and just, you know, watch my beautiful face, you know what I'm saying? I'm a handsome dude. I, you know, <laughs> that's what people tell me, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I'm just saying, you know, I'm all right. You know, I look all right. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, if you want to catch my, catch my show and watch my live streams, please go to Long Beach Joe Jets, Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube subscribe, give me a thumbs up for your notifications, and, and you know what I'm saying, please subscribe and, and check out all my content, you know, I go live, and I want to be able to talk to people, you know what I'm saying, when I go live, and, and just have discourse back and forth, you know what I'm saying, so everybody, please check all those things out, um, and you know, again, follow me across my YouTube pages too, so now we're going ahead, and we're going to get right into it, listen, there was a move made, okay, the Eagles trade Carson Wentz to the Colts, for a third round pick in 2021 and a conditional second round pick in 2022. Now we're starting there because there's a lot of people that want to get rid of Sam Darnold. Okay. You know, I hear everyone's arguments. I respect Jets fans across the board, regardless of whether you agree or disagree with my point, um, regardless of whether you want to keep Sam, you want to move on from, him. if you can give me a solid, argument, we can go back and forth and have discussion. I understand why some would want to get rid of him. Uh, things did not necessarily turn out the way that, you know, some would have hoped last year. And a lot of people blame a lot of those things on him. Okay. Now, if you look at this situation where Carson Wentz, who's a guy, you know, that's pretty much a year removed from being one of the better quarterbacks in the league. You know what I mean? Last year, he didn't have a great year, but before that, this guy, you know, outside of the little injuries that he had here and there, everyone was saying, hey, Carson Wentz, this guy looks amazing. He's done more than Sam Darnold has done if you look at, you know, his achievements in the league. And they only got a third rounder for him in a conditional second. So everyone that was running around kind of saying that, hey, we think we can get a first round pick for Sam Darnold. Sam is worth this. Sam is worth that. Starts to make you wonder what exactly is his worth now? If you want to move on from Sam Darnold, I don't know if you're getting that first rounder that you thought you were going to get, dog. I don't know if you're getting that because we've seen other quarterbacks. And hell, you know, you look at what Matthew Stafford was traded for. You know, when you have a guy that hasn't done, you know, hasn't done nearly as much as some of these other guys that are getting traded and they're getting traded for a compensation that is like, you know, again, Carson Wentz, a third round, a second round. I don't know if you're getting, Sam, you're getting a first rounder for that. You know, the Colts made a solid move, though. Salute to them. Uh, they got themselves a quarterback, Frank Wright, you know, as a guy that has that chemistry as well. He's had it in the past with, with Carson Wentz. They've been able to do some things. I think he threw like 33 touchdowns, which is the Eagles record, franchise record. So they have some history there. But let me tell you something, the impact it could have on Sam and his trade value, it's there. As well, when you start to look about as, you know, some of the teams you wanted to trade Sam to, Colts, constantly. People were saying, hey, let's just send them to the Colts. Let's send them there. They need a quarterback. The Colts will be interested. Well, that door is closed now. Now where do you send them? You know, what kind of compensation do you get back now? You got to wonder about that stuff. That also has ramifications as well on our second pick. Because all these teams that we thought would be quarterback hungry, some of them have solved those issues. The Lions, 
people were talking about, hey, let's give them the second pick. You know, they're hungry. They're, they're looking to move on. You know, Stafford's out the door. He's going to be gone. You know, that, that, that door is shut on Stafford. They're going to get rid of him. We can give them the second pick, and then they can move up and get Justin Fields. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They just went and got Jared Goff. I don't, you know, to me, it seems like they're extremely confident in that kid, and it seems like they really want to move on with him. So if they're going to do that, then, you know, I don't think they'll give you as much as you think to move up for Justin Fields. There's no need for it. Now, again, you look at the Colts situation. They've traded. They've got a quarterback that they want. Now, that you know, you start to look, okay, where are you moving to now? If you're going to trade down off that second pick, Carolina, they're still in the hunt. There's a lot of rumors they're aggressively going to go after Deshaun Watson. If they end up with him, then what do you do? So there's a lot of questions, a lot of questions, and we're going to be talking about that tonight. Also going to be talking about this Jets offensive line, man. Listen, this Jets O-line needs work. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It needs work, man. It needs crazy work. It needs work. <laughs> Ooh, at times, this O-line was terrible. Terrible. Oh, my goodness, man. There was issues galore, all right? Makai Becton, one of the bright, shining stars of the season, one of the better players that we have on our offensive side of the ball. That dude was amazing, amazing this year. Should have been a pro bowler, got snubbed. Got snubbed. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go in. (laughs) I'm not going to go in. I could go in. I could just start talking crazy, okay? Okay. I could just start talking crazy about how he got snubbed out of the Pro Bowl, you know, but I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. Y'all slept on him. You slept on him. You slept on him. That's all I'm saying. They were sleeping on Makai. That's all I'm saying. But when you look at the rest of the line, there was a lot of struggles. Alex Lewis, he struggled. He also dealt with a bit of injuries here and there as well. Connor McGovern, we saw him. There was a lot of people wondering, did we make the right signing? Is this a guy that we should have brought in in free agency? Because things did not look good, all right? Then you look at that other side as well. Van Roden, not the greatest. There was issues up front with him constantly. He was getting beat. Questions about George Fant as well his protection coming around. And we also saw it get magnified when Makai Becton would go out with an injury. Whoa. That's when things would get real ugly. I'm talking super ugly. Pressure coming from left and right. Guys just couldn't protect themselves. Couldn't, couldn't get, hold their blocks. Sam running for his life. Hell, we saw even when Sam was out, we saw Flacco running for his life as well. Big time. Here big. we go. Yeah, here we go. So we've got to find a way to shore that up this offseason. We have far too much capital. Draft-wise, we have far too much capital, you know, in free agency as well, as far as cash on the cap, to still be dealing with these same issues next season. Shouldn't be happening. Should not be happening. So we're going to get to that. You know, we'll talk about J.J. Watt as well. He was released. We're going to talk about it all. And I'm ready to get into it. So we're going to get to these lines. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get to these lines again. 515 Six zero two nine six three nine again five one five six zero two nine six three nine. If you are listening to me on Blog Talk again, also live stream during my radio show. Um, my chat, I call them the savages. Why? Because they're savage, pure savage. Nobody is safe. They don't care. They don't care about nothing. If you got a take that they disagree with, they're on you. It does not matter who you are. Nobody is safe out here. Not even me. Not even me. People be getting at me too. You know what I'm saying? They get after me. But, uh, you know, if you want to call in as well, it's 515-602-9639. Salute to all the savages in the chat. We'll be coming to you as well. I like talking to you. You drop some, some knowledge. Give me your thoughts about what's going on. We'll be talking to you as well. Now, again, I'm going to bring this up. If you're calling in to my show, again, the number is 515-602-9639. When you call in, you're put into a queue, okay? I can see you. If you call in and hang up and call in and hang up, you're only going to put yourself at the back of the queue. I have to repeat this. 
Because there's some people, you know, that may not understand. If I do not know your name or your number by heart, I will call out your area code. Please know your area code. Not trying to disrespect nobody. I'm just saying, please know your area code. That's all. You know what I mean? Then I'm going to come to you and we're going to have discussion. Love discourse. Love talking to every single Jets fan. Single rule on my show, do not call into my show. Do not curse when you call into my show. Call into my show and curse, I get you out of here. Fast. Fast. Faster than we got rid of Adam Gaines. That was fast. That was fast. We got rid of him so fast it was insane. So now we're going to get to the lines, all right? First guy we're going to go to is my guy Steve, man. My guy Steve calling in early. You know what I'm saying? Salute to you, Steve. How are you doing today, my friend? How are you feeling? Hey, I'm doing good, Joe. How are you? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. Let's get into it, man. I want to get your thoughts on this Carson Wentz trade and how it could impact the value of Sam Darnold. What are your thoughts about it, man? Yeah, no, listen. When, I, when, when the trade happened between Indianapolis and, um, and Philadelphia, listen – I knew I knew Carson Wentz was going to be on his way out the door because I mean he wanted out of Philadelphia because after from when when at times when Jalen Hurts was taking over but you know what Philadelphia chose to move on they gave Indianapolis um you know Carson Wentz and you know they and you know in return they got they got a couple of draft picks back it was a good trade for both teams because you know Carson Wentz is now back with a guy who he worked with at the beginning of his career, and um, and and you know for Philadelphia they got some they got additional picks back, so now it's Jalen Hurts' team in Philadelphia. But I mean the way of how it impacts on Sam right now, um, see the thing is like you know the rumors are still going around. You know are the Jets going to trade Sam or are they going to give him another chance? You just don't know what's going to happen, uh, honestly. And and the thing is about, like, the whole thing when they were all talking about the thing with Deshaun Watson. Listen, I've said this before, and I say this again. I wouldn't mind getting Deshaun Watson because, listen, Deshaun Watson is a three-time Pro Bowler. You know, he's made it to the Pro Bowl three times in his four seasons. The biggest issue is about getting Deshaun Watson is, is how very, very, very expensive he's going to be. And honestly, mm-hmm. I just don't know if Joe Douglas is going to get him because to me, Joe Douglas is the type of a guy that wants to build through a draft. I just don't know if he's going to get it. But at the end of the day, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, look, Steve, I agree with your takes there. I look at the situation, and I've, I've talked about it as well. I think, you know, Deshaun clearly is going to cost you some capital. Um, there's been a lot of rumors out there that they also want to see Quentin Williams thrown into the deal. I know a lot of fans, a lot of Jets fans that kind of look at that situation and go, they don't want to have anything to do with giving up Quentin Williams. Um, but, you know, we'll see what we do in that situation. But chasing Deshaun is definitely going to be out there. There's going to be other teams as well. They're going to be chasing him too. Carolina Panthers, I think, are definitely going to be in the mix. There's also been other teams named as well that could possibly be in there too to really chase Deshaun. So, I mean, you're going to have to give up some capital, and it's definitely going to be some first. I think the Texans, you know, if they do trade uh, Deshaun, like like you, like you said as well, they're definitely going to want, you know, quite a haul because they're going to have to rebuild everything. And I'm talking everything there. They're definitely going to have to fix things. But when you get back to no, Sam no, Darnold no, 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 and you look I at the think... situation there, go ahead. No, it's just that no, – no, 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 listen. The Houston Texans mm-hmm. are right now the biggest mess in the NFL – They have the biggest mess out of any franchise right now in the NFL. It's just, it's just, you know, I don't know what they're going to do because obviously their former coach who was also their former GM, which I don't know what the Texans were smoking when they gave Bill O'Brien that job, but but obviously he's out the door. But the thing is though, this is the thing though, that, that, that I want to ask you, Joe. If the Jets mm-hmm. decide, you know what, we're going to trade on Sam, I want to I want, I want, to give me your thoughts on this because a lot of Jets fans really love this guy. What is your thought on Zach Wilson? Uh, you know, I think that Zach Wilson's a talented guy. Um, you know, he's a mobile. He can move around. He's got arm strength. Uh, he can make plays. Um, I think that him, um, Trevor Lawrence, I really like Justin Fields the most. Um, you know, because clearly Trevor Lawrence is, I, I think the Jags are going to take him number one. 
But out of the two, uh, I like Justin Fields the most. I don't understand why a lot of Jets fans have kind of turned on the idea of Justin Fields because I remember just a short time ago, Justin Fields was like the rave amongst the entire fan base. People were talking about him left and right and how they couldn't wait to, you know, have him on, have him on the team. And that, you know, the number two pick, especially after he played once he had, you know, jacked up his rib, um, you know, he played through that and was able to beat Clemson in that game. And people were just all over the place thinking, Hey, this guy's going to be, you know, the next, the next jet, he's going to be our quarterback. And then all of a sudden the narrative is kind of spun to where everybody's talking about Wilson, but you know, I like Wilson as well, but I prefer if, if we're going the quarterback route in free agency with, or excuse me, in the draft, which yeah. again, I want to continue to say that I would love to stick with Sam Darnold. That's who I'd like to stick with. But um, if we're going the quarterback uh, route in the draft, then I prefer Justin Fields over Zach Wilson. But I want to get back to, yeah, to the Jets and this current roster, though, though uh, with you, Steve, because you look at this situation with the offensive line, whew, there's some issues up front. You know, but Makai Beckin was a, a standout this year for us. He was phenomenal there at left tackle. But then you look at the rest of the line and there's issues. A lot of people are looking at Greg Van Roten and they're saying to themselves, the Jets should probably move on from him this year. Do you agree with that? Is that a guy you want to see cut? He honestly wouldn't be a guy I wouldn't mind moving on from him. Another, like, because the way of how I see of how the offensive line should go I think if we do mm-hmm. let Connor, I mean, not Connor McGovern, um, I think if we let um, Greg Van Roten go, Greg this Van is Roten, what yeah. I would like to see. I would like to see if the Jets would do this at the center position because, listen, McGovern can also play on the other side of the offensive line as well. I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind switching McGovern over to, like, the left or the right position of the offensive line. Um, I would love mm-hmm. the Jets to bring in the center from the Green Bay Packers, Corey Lindsley, because he is yeah. a great player. Um, I also would love the Jets to go after the guy uh, from New England, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Thurney. Well, I can't say his last Joe name, Thune. right? But, yeah, Thune, yeah Thune. because New England, New England, from what I heard, is not going to be giving him a new contract at the um, during mm-hmm. this offseason. So they're moving on from him. Um, so honestly, yeah, because there are still some positions on the offensive line now, because here is the thing though, now going back with, with the whole thing, you know, with the quarterback situation before we continue with talking about other things, Joe, because this is the thing, here's the thing about Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields has, has great potential to be very good in the NFL. This is the only thing I have an issue with him about, which is this, he's coming out of Ohio state. And in the past, Joe, we have not seen quarterbacks that have come into the NFL that, that have done very, very successful out of Ohio State. Like, Dwayne Haskins well, hasn't been that very good. Um, another quarterback, that, that, um, this that, that, guy who the – that, Look, Steve, that, I, I hear you. But that's, that's not a good take. You can't, you can't say, well, because one quarterback is not, has come out – or a couple of quarterbacks have come out of Ohio that he cannot be successful because maybe some guys have struggled in the past. There's been quarterbacks that have come out. Hell, look at, look at Carson Wentz. That guy came from North, North Dakota. Who was successful from North Dakota before him? Nobody. Mm. Like, nobody. So you can't sit there and just say, well, you know, because the guys from this college, I mean, certain guys have struggled, you know, so he's not going to – I mean, look, I hear your take, but I just – I can't agree with that. You have to uh, analyze the player for, you know, who they are. And Justin Fields, again, has shown that he has ability, dude. You saw what he did. The gutsy performance that he put out there in that championship game was insane. The guy played with a jacked up yeah. ribs and was going out there and throwing dimes, and there was still pressure. He didn't let up. He continued to battle. And, again, that was against the number one prospect and, you know, number one prospect quarterback in all of college football, in Trevor Lawrence. And he was chucking them. Say this right now, and they took Joe, that game because of him. And he just been... thoroughly outplayed in that football game, see? Joe, here's the thing I'm just going to say right now. There have been rumors mm-hmm. about two in the NFL going on. Is because listen, no matter what happens with Jacksonville, Jacksonville is going to be picking a quarterback number one, and the player that they should take is Trevor Lawrence. And I'm going to say this: if the Jets choose to move on from Sam, and listen, I'm with you too. I would love to give Sam an, another chance with 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 uh, with Robert Solomon and Mike and Mike Lafleur. But I'm going to say this right now. 
Trevor Lawrence is going to be the number one quarterback go, um, going into the draft. And I'm mm-hmm. going to say this right now. There were rumors about that that some NFL analysis were saying that maybe Zach Wilson was going to go first because some teams had Zach Wilson actually going first in their mock draft over Trevor Lawrence. I mean, listen, right now it's a rumor, and right now we're in the middle of February. We're not going to be getting to the draft until the end of April. Honestly, Joe, yeah. anything could happen. Anything could happen with these next few weeks. But like I said before, yeah. going back to the thing, with, there is really a team that wants to get a quarterback in this draft, and if the Jets are going to decide, you know what, Robert Solom, Joe Douglas, Mike LaFleur, they're going to say, you know what, I want to give Sam another chance. This is what I think we should do. Let's trade down the pick. Trading down would not be the, would not be the worst idea either because you, yeah. if, if there's a team that wants to get a quarterback, listen, Carolina's in that mix. The Falcons are in that mix because, you know, the Falcons, I think, should move on from Matt Ryan. Um, New Orleans is another team because obviously with Drew Brees almost going to be walking out the door, he's another one. There are and even the Chicago Bears as well. Now I don't know if I would feel comfortable if if the Jets would want to trade something with New England to get the second pick because New England is another team that needs a quarterback. But honestly, Joe, you just don't know what's going to happen at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, like I mean, see, you you talking that talk. I ain't gonna knock you. You know, we we don't necessarily know, but yeah, if you want to move on from him, there there's still some teams out there. A team that you forgot as well, Pittsburgh could be in but, the mix too. There's a lot of yeah, rumors that they're ready to move on Joe. from Big Ben too. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see what happens though, Steve. Go, go ahead. Zach I'll let you get the final word. Go ahead. Yeah, the one thing now since I spoke about Justin Fields, listen, it's just listen. Justin Fields does – there are some things that do worry me a little bit about Justin Fields, but if Fields does become the quarterback, I would give him a shot and I would support him. Now the thing of going yeah. back with Zach Wilson. Listen, Zach Wilson, I will say this about him. I think he's incredibly talented. I watched his highlights from BYU of what he has done, mm-hmm. and I think he has potential to be great as well. There's one big problem about him, and this was something that I read about – he has an attitude problem, Joe. He, he can be very, very arrogant. And it's something mm-hmm. that I read about him. His attitude would be something that I would get nervous about. Because the thing is, cool. the last thing I would need is someone to come onto this team and start chaos and drama like another Jamal Adams situation. I mean, if you watch that video of Jamal <laughs> Adams, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Listen, I, I was like, Listen, I, was like I don't know yeah, what he was doing, but – but the thing is with yeah. Zach Wilson is the attitude is something I'm a little worried about. Yeah, listen, Steve. Uh, look, I hear you. I hear you. But, you know, I think, again, that attitude, that cockiness, that comes from being determined. He's a guy that wants to fight. He's a guy that wants to prove. So, you know, sometimes that helps guys, you know, to be a little little cocky, a little, hey, I'm going to get the job done, a guy that's assertive, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. But, again, you that, know that's something that I've heard from a lot of scouts as well, too, Steve. So, you know, we'll see how he pans out. But I got to get to the rest hey, of these calls. These are quite hey, a bit Joe, of, quite a bit of callers. So Joe, I want you to have a good hey, night, Joe. my man. All right. Hey, Joe, Joe, yeah. Joe, Joe. Before I go, one last mm-hmm. thing. I'm sorry. I know you got to get to the other calls, but one last thing. You know what? With mm-hmm. Coach Robert Solomon being our new coach now, maybe that is something that the Jets do need. We need someone that's a little bit antagonizing. Like, we got to have, like, that Bart Scott feeling again, like we had back in the day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean we got some guys. But you have a good night, all right, Steve? All right, man. Good night, Joe. Bye-bye. All right. Have a good one. Listen, Steve calling in. He's he's talking that talk. I know some people are concerned with the with you know just the over <laughs> the attitude. You know, I don't mind a little attitude as long as it comes with production. You know what I'm saying? If you want a little attitude, I don't mind it. But I need a little production, and I also need a guy that's still able to keep the team chemistry. You can be you know, a little cocky, you can be a little arrogant. You can feel like you're better than everybody else. Cause damn it. When you go on that field, honestly, it's kill to be killed to be completely honest. You got to go out there ready to do whatever it takes to win a game. You have to go out there feeling that you are the best quarterback or, you know, on the field, you're the best quarterback in the league. When you go out there and play, even if you're not, you have to have that belief in your belief in yourself, you know, as a, you know, 
as, as, as quarterbacks in particular, as players in particular, you have to go out there and truly feel that you're the best thing in the league when you step out there on the field so you can perform at your top. You need to go out there and do your thing. So we're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. Again, 515-602-9639. The lines are open. We got callers. Continue to call in. When you call in, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to speak to everybody. Everybody will get their time. Please be patient, you know what I'm saying, and do not curse because I'll get you out of here. I'll get you out of here, I'm telling you. I'll get you out of here fast, okay, fast. Faster than we got Jamal Adams out of here. That was fast. <laughs> Out of here, your box safety still running your mouth. You still talking about the Jets, dude? Damn, I thought we got you up out of here. That's what I thought we did. You still talking about us? We about to get back to these lines. My guy E, my guy E's on the line. E, what's going on, my man? How are you feeling today? We're talking about this Jets offensive line, man. You look at this situation, Alex Lewis. It's a guy that some people look at, and they're like, they're on the fence about him. There's some Jets fans that look at him and say, ah, don't know, you know, if I want to get rid of him or not. I'm a guy that's saying, hey, let's move on from him. Let's save the cash that we could possibly get back from him. What say you? Here, oh, hello? 917? Yeah, what's going on? It's uh, Venom. It's Angel, it's oh, it's Venom G's. I thought this was E. Venom yeah. G's. My guy, salute yeah. to you. Yo, Venom G. Listen, yeah, Venom, hold on. on. Savage, hold on. Hold on! It's a Listen, we already started early. I thought that was my... Yeah. I thought it was, listen, my guy, Venom, is something else. <laughs> all right? Listen, don't mess with Venom, all right? We got a yeah. two Savage on the line right now. You already know what time it is. So, Venom, listen, Alex Lewis, are you moving on from him, my friend? Are you releasing him? Yeah, I definitely am, man. We got to we gotta get better in the old line, man. This is, you know, it's the same thing in Philadelphia. You take a couple pieces away, you see how their quarterback reacts. So we got to get a replacement, better replacement than who's ever picking these old lines because we did the same thing two years in a row. So we have to make – these decision a lot wiser this go around. Okay. And, and, okay. And so pull out, pull out that, pull out that bankroll for, for a couple of them. You know? See, now because we Jones talking. Did, now we talking. Frugal. Now we talking. Now we talking, Venom. Now we talking. Yeah. We talking <laughs> that cash. Here, Here we go. go. Here we go. Yo, listen. You, Yo, listen. It, Who it, is your number mm-hmm. one target? and an offensive line in free agency. I need to know, Venom, because you be calling oh, in man. with all these grandpa takes, man. I want to hear that. Yo, I want to hear, I, I, I I hear some fire. I want to hear that you, yo, you – are you blowing I, the bag? Are you going through the bag? What are you doing with the money? Yeah, yeah. Who is I'm, your I'm, target, I'm man? The bag, man. I'm target? blowing the bag. I'm blowing the bag. I'm going with that um, tackle from, from the Pats, man, and then I'm going with Allen Robinson, and. And maybe even Juju, man. You got to throw that back out there. Probably just a, a cornerback, too, as well. Mm, so you really so, blowing so. the bag. You talking about spinning on impact positions. Now, let's start yeah, with this, then. of course. If, okay. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. So let's let's get into it. How much are you offering Joe Thune a year, then? What are you giving him? God damn. That's a, that's a tough mm-hmm. one. That's a tough one. Ah, oh, man, Jesus. It's, I know he's one of the top, you know, old linemen in the league, so I know he's going to have to be up there, man. So I, I, to protect my, to protect me your investment at quarterback, I don't care who it is, if it's Sam, if it's whoever we're going with, I, it, it, it just needs to be you got to build that line up first, and then you can just I think give that me a number, Ben. Venom, give oh, me a number. Man, Don't I'm give me no grandpa. What Come more on, do you want 14, from me? 14. I Come on, Venom. Fourteen mil, I think, man. It, 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 Four, even, fourteen even mil. You think twelve to twelve to fourteen? Huh? Yeah, twelve okay. to fourteen, man. You know, okay. so I, I, I know, right, you, I know it's, a, it's kind of risky up there, but I know, 
you know, but we got to make sure our quarterbacks can be upright to throw that ball downfield. You know, right, and then Ra- right. Allen okay. Robinson, he's just he's number one ta- a talent, man. I think he'll get everybody else around uh, around him a lot better. Okay, so how much are you giving Allen Robinson in? Ah, whatever the hell he wants, man. <laughs> we need, we need one. Yo, I, I, I think we need, we need one person to see. We need one superstar. <laughs> Yo, they, if we gotta pay that jet price, man. The we gotta hell pay the jet price. <laughs> we gotta pay that jet price, man. Jesus, man. You know, I think I, I don't know. I don't know what I'll pay them, but I think you know it should be, you know, a lucrative deal for for them and somebody that stays on the field. Or you know, I don't think he missed any games. I don't think Dooney missed any games as well either. So I think they'll mm-hmm. both be productive and available targets. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, you know and, I, and, I look at the situation. Go go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And I. I just want, you know, people that's going to be players that's going to be on the field that's available to us because we had this year it was just so many players that were out that wasn't available to us. So we don't want to be back in that position again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I look at it the same. Um, You know, you talked a little bit about Allen Robinson. Everyone knows I love Allen Robinson. And I think, honestly, it's going to take somewhere near $20 per season. I mean, if you look at what the top guys are getting paid, I'm keeping it real. Yeah. You go yeah, into free yeah. agency, these top guys are getting paid. Yeah. What I think DeAndre Hopkins making like twenty one million this year. We know when yeah. Mark Cooper got his deal, it was twenty million. You got and you know, it's not just him that, you know, could be going into free agency. You know, you got Godwin, Kenny Galladay yeah. could possibly be out there too. Look at, so look at, um, you know, that number's gonna get pushed up. He just he just got yeah. the, the hundred million dollar receiver. You know, he just got <laughs> paid that hurt. You know, we don't want that type of situation, but you know, we need yeah. somebody that's a, a, a beast like. Yeah, we do. We we need a we need a number one wide receiver. That's literally what yeah. we need. And we need yeah. somebody like you said as well that's going to be there because regardless of who is going to be the quarterback, we need somebody for them to throw to. Point blank, period. We need a guy that when all the chips are down, when everything's falling apart. The quarterback can look at him and just say, hey, here's the ball. I'm going to put it in a position. Please make a play for me. Just like you yeah. know, Deshaun Watson had with the, in Texans with uh, DeAndre Hopkins, just like when DeAndre went to Arizona, Kyler Murray has that now. Whoever we bring in, right, whether we, you know, whether we go get Deshaun or whether we stay with Sam or whether we you know, draft the guy you know, out of the draft to come in and throw the football for us, we have to give them weapons and a target because we saw this year what happens when you don't allow – your quarterback to have targets. Like like guys that can really, really make plays on a consistent basis at the number one wide receiver and, spot. So And this is the thing talking, when, people, talking about when people when people are talking about Go this, you gotta look at you gotta look at how you know, how Carson Wentz was two years ago before the old linemen mm-hmm. started leaving and all the players got hurt and look at him now. Now yeah. he's getting traded for a second round a second round pick or a third round pick in a second, which I think is a great yeah. way to trade him because now what they did was erase that money off their books, send him over there for a second this year. And if you ball out next, if you ball out this year or the next year, yo, we, that second round pick is now the next year pick is potentially a first round pick. And that's how you should make deals happen. You know? Yeah. So yeah, Philly, he- Philly won all around the board. Yeah, yeah, they did. You know, and, and that, that was going to be my next question for you is when you look at that trade, them only having to give up a third and a conditional second round pick, you know, for a guy that, mm-hmm. you know, achieved quite a bit in this league. At one point, he was one of the better quarterbacks in the league. People were extremely excited about him. He was highly touted coming out of the draft as well. For the fans that want to trade Sam Darnold and thought that they, you know, or still think that they can get a first round pick for him, what are your thoughts? What would you say to them when you look at the compensation that was given up for Wentz? Do you still think, or do you even think at all that we can get a first round pick for Sam Darnold, possibly in a in a trade? I think I think it's just, you know, the same thing. What we're looking at is is you know just anxiety of these guys, they want to see so much for Sam and with everything around him just like what we saw with Jared Goff, um, Goff in Los Angeles. With nothing around him, 
and with the coaching staff looking suspect, and then when some a new coach come in and he flourishes, he goes to maybe the top five quarterback in the league, and that's what we've been going through where the coaching staff didn't know what the hell was going on, how to use this guy. Let's see what it looks like under Robert Sala and what his team's going to do before you walk away with this talent because three years ago, four years ago, Sam was – was in the talks of all these elite quarterbacks. So I think just give them a chance. You see what Baker's doing. You see what Josh is doing. Just put the pieces around him and let him go rock out. That's how you have to build around these guys. And it'll be it'll be such a, you know, it'll be crazy to let him go somewhere else and watch him ball out for the Pittsburgh Steelers or the 49ers or a team like that. That would be crazy. Yeah, yeah. And so my final question for you before I let you go, Venom, because you you didn't have a call, man. You didn't have a call. I ain't lying to you. You didn't fire. You didn't fire. You didn't fire. Yeah, you bring the fire. You know, I ain't gonna lie to you. You know, I'm gonna give you your roses. But my final question before I let you go is: We talked about spending money in free agency, but when you look in the past. Joe Douglas has been kind of conservative with that. He hasn't really gone after many big name free agents. And if he has, he hasn't really wanted to pay them the type of money uh, that they wanted to come in here. Are you concerned that this year he won't be aggressive yet again in free agency, you know, in lieu of just thinking that he can just build through the draft? Is that a concern of yours going to free agency this year? No, I, I, I think he's going to have to loosen up. Dude. He's going to start, have to stop being frugal with some of these players because nobody's going to come here knowing that the players want a chance to win, want to be in a good team, or the option to get paid. And if you're not doing mm-hmm. any of those, they're not even looking at you. So you're going to definitely have to give them some incentive to be on the team for three, four years. So it has to be something like that. And especially if they're good players, you can sell them on Robert Sala. You can sell them on all these things that you want, but they either want to get paid to come here. They don't care about any – other issues they want to get paid or they know they're going to win and if you look at any place else we're going to have to pay them to be here you know it's it's, it's, Mm. so joe is going to have to break that bank out a little bit ease up off the ease up off the coins and and spend them out (laughs) 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 yeah you know grandpa venom calling in you know with the grandpa (laughs) he's always so safe and so logical (laughs) Absolutely. Give him my hand. Give him my hand. Give him my hand. Listen, man. Listen, man. I, I got to get back to the rest of these callers, man. Adam Gates thoughts. Yo, yo Bruh, I'm trying, you know. About this. What do you think about, what do you think about all the stuff with Jamal Adams and, all the craziness wanting to get away from Adam Gates and potentially him going to Seattle this off season. You know, it's listen. First off, it's beautiful because <laughs> a lot of the, <laughs> listen. No, <laughs> it's called karma. It's called karma, yeah. my man. You know, yeah, karma yeah. coming your way. Yeah. Yeah. You it ain't smart like you do. <laughs> it used to, is it? Yes, that's what I say. I say, yes, you did all that nonsense, right? You bashed the fan base. You ripped us from from pillar to post. You you did a full-blown spread. You were telling people in parking lots you couldn't wait to be a Dallas Cowboy all to get out of here. And guess what? Yeah. Now you might be, you know what I'm saying, re- reunited with your best friend. <laughs> and it feels so good. So good. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And you know what else? You, you Jamal, stop talking about the Jets, bro. Just stop doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, her, we all know winner. there's some – yeah, there's also some rustling between, you know, Russell Wilson and, and Seattle as well. He could be gone. Then you, you'd you be yes. in a rebuild your damn self. How that feel? Yes. You yes. leave, think you're going to go there and have a smooth rest of your career as you just bolt on the Jets, and then we turn things around with a respected coaching oh. candidate and a new, you know what I'm saying, oh. a roster put together now because we got a quality general manager, and you over there trying yes. to figure things out in Seattle yet again. I can't wait for that to yeah. happen to you, my man. But I got to get to the and, rest and, of these and, calls. And, and, 
Go ahead. Go ahead. And I can't, can't wait for I can't wait for Marcus May to reap all all the benefits of that, man. Ooh. I can't wait. He's a stand up guy. He stood down. So Marcus May deserves it, man. Big facts. Salute to you, Venom. I gotta get I gotta go on. You have a good night, all right? All right? Joe. Have a good one, man. Listen, Venom G, salute to him. Listen, people pretty too people talking about Adam. Jamal Adams. <laughs> you get what you get, my man. That's called karma, man. That's called karma. That's all that is. You'll be reunited. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing to see. We're gonna keep going to these lines, you know what I'm saying? But first, I'm gonna get to my savages in the chat really quickly. You know what I'm saying? Salute to y'all. I see everybody. Ask me a question, we go back and forth. Again, if you're on Blog Talk Radio and you're listening to me through that, also have a chat, you know, because I live stream as well. Call my chat the Savages because they're savage, man. They just get after it. My guy Jack White in the chat, salute to you, Jack White. Jack White says, I will ride with Sam, but we better hit on every pick in the draft. You know, that's important. I don't know if we'll hit on every single pick. I, mean, you know, I don't know about that. But I do know that we'll hit, I think with Joe Douglas, you look at, you know, our last draft, we hit on quite a bit of guys, man. Austin Davis, Makai Becton, you know, we said we got out of him. Mims looks phenomenal. You know, Joe Douglas has picked some guys, man, has been able to come in and do some things. P. Ryan looks smooth. There's been some guys, man. So we're going to keep uh, we're gonna keep going forward. <laughs> going to my guy, Macau, man. Macau, I believe this is you on the line, my man. Good to see you. I'm going to thank you for calling in tonight. Listen, man, I want to get your thoughts on this offensive line. When you look at it, you watched it the entire season. What was your assessment of this line, man? What's up, Joe? Can I bring that energy? You know what I mean? No. We, look, we got to get this started. Um, yeah. As far as that old line, they had their ups. They had their downs. It was, it was mostly down. It was, a lot of, it was a lot of down, especially like the moments when Beckham went out the game. Ooh, it was heartbreak city. It was like, oh, okay, cool, Sam, run. Run, Sam. <laughs> So, for me, um, offensive line, like, again, I don't mean to be the dead horse, but, like, yo, we got to address that in the offseason. Give me Sooney. Give me Corey Lindsley. That's honestly, if I'm Joe, that's where I'm starting. I know I know everything is skill position, skill position, go, go pay A-Rob, you know, $24 million, which, again, I'm fine with. However, I got to make sure whoever is back there has a moment to throw the ball. Yeah. Yeah, but but the question then becomes as well, though, and, and that's that's understandable. But hey, you know, how much are you giving those guys a year? Like you, you talked about Thuni. How much are you giving him a year to come here, man? Me personally, I I mean, I'm thinking Thuni anywhere between an eighteen to twenty million a year range. Wow, okay. Okay. Because okay. again, I, I, you know, I, I, I go ahead, go ahead. But I guess my I guess my whole thing is like I know I know we when Salah got hired, everything was no jet sacks, no jet sacks, cool. And I, I'm not even looking at this as a jet sack. I'm looking at this as correcting past mistakes where, hey, you know what? We weren't able to get our guy in the door. If we want Sooney and that that is your number one target, go get Sooney. Make make this that off season mm. where you, you, you nab the player that you want to get. Because all that's part of the culture, too. Again, that, that whole Anthony Barr and I'm sick to my stomach. I can't even we, – we, we, we got we to gotta, – Make that a distant memory. Like that kind of stuff is still associated with the Jets. So again, going out and getting your big name free agent, whether it's one, two, or three, you I mean, in my opinion, you got you gotta spend that money. You got you gotta open up the checkbook. hmm Yeah. I mean there's guys that are definitely making that cash. I think uh what was it? Uh, Matthews, I think, is guy that's making around there. There's, a lot, there's some linemen in this league that are making around that 1920. And let me tell you something, Joe Thune, if he comes out, I, you know, I can't knock you. I could see him definitely breaking the bank even now. But even going forward with that, kind of delving a little bit deeper into that question, because you want to spin, and I understand that, because you want to make sure you get your guy. But are you concerned that, you know, you look in the past with Joe Douglas, he's not a guy that, that spins like that, that he's frugal you know, in free agency. He's not a guy that gets too aggressive. Are you concerned that he won't be aggressive yet again in this year's free agency, just kind of bargain basement shopping like he did in last year's free agency? To a certain extent, yes, but at the same time, no, mostly no, because I feel like that first year, Joe knew he had a pass. We kind of all knew he had a pass, and that pass was Adam Gates. So it was like, okay, cool. Hey, I didn't – this, is, this isn't my head coach. 
This isn't a friend of mine, but not this ain't my head coach. These ain't my players. So now for me, this yeah. is the first year where Joe Douglas is truly on the clock. And now he's truly being – like, the Salah hire, that was the moment where it was like, Joe, you're on the clock. You're, you're finna get held accountable now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's me, true. You know, yeah. in, in years past, you know, him – him, I guess last year, that was him setting, and, and I guess the way I'm looking at it, that was him setting himself up for success this year. Mm. Okay. Yeah, look, I, and sticking with this offensive line, because you're bringing the fire right now, you look at this situation, there's some guys that currently are on this line, or excuse me, there's some free agents that people are interested in bringing back, and one of them is Pat Elfin. Some people are saying, hey, we like this guy, we'd like to see him brought back. Is he a guy that you'd like to see resigned as well? I think he was a first round pick. Um, I'm always fine with the potential. <sighs> I guess I mean the way I would treat Pat would be if we if you know I, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't slot him in as my starter like right now at this particular point. But hey, you know what? Mm-hmm. If we we're in the camp knowing hey we're gonna we're gonna put a, you know bring in a couple young dudes or you know maybe a grizzle vet. See who wins out that battle, who's having a better, better, uh, you know, uh, camp or whatnot, and go from there. But Pat, Pat Oakon, if if the deal is right, you know, he's willing to come in, will come back for, a, you know, reasonable contract. I mean, I, I'm not paying Pat Oakon eight nine million dollars. So hey, you know, Pat, if you want that, yeah. you're going to just have to go and hit the street. But you know, you want to come back <laughs> on a one two year, you know, I mean one two million one you know one or two million dollar deal. Hey, I'm all for it. You know, I guess I guess approve approve the deal. Okay, okay. I respect that. And so my final question before I let you go, Macau, you bring the fire today, man, is when you look at Cam Clark, man, what are your thoughts about him? I mean, shouldn't you – know, there's a lot of Jets fans that look at the situation and they say, we drafted this guy, we haven't seen anything out of him. At some point, like, when are we going to see him possibly get filled in as a starter? Or a lot of people honestly want to move forward with him and just try him out there as the, as the starting guard off the bat. They don't even really want to go in free agency. They have that much faith in Joe's drafting ability. What are your thoughts about him, man? And do you agree with some of those fans that just want to see him, you know, be the starter? Me personally, I mean, I know I know they got to take that first year, especially, you know, offensive linemen. Hey, I mean, especially offensive linemen coming from a smaller school. You got you got to put that you I mean, I guess you you, you got to get that NFL body on you. Um he wasn't a small mm-hmm. dude to start with. Um, but at the same time, I'm I'm again, just like with Elfline, I can't slot you in as my starter. Without you proving yourself, hey, you, hey, if you hit camp and you go ahead and you do your thing and, and you legitimately beat somebody out, no problem. But no, nah, camp, Cameron Clark's gonna have to earn his spot just like everybody else. I mean, for me, helmet offline, same boat. But again, if I bring in a Thuny, a Lindsley, nah, that's my starter. But you too, nah, you gonna you gonna have to earn it. Yeah, okay, I respect that. Listen, Makai, I want to thank you for calling in tonight, man. You're phenomenal, Makai, absolutely phenomenal. You have a good night, all right? You too, man. Be safe, Joe. Now you have a good one. This is McCown calling in with the fire, man. He called in with the fire. I ain't going to lie too long. I keep getting to these lines. We've got quite a bit of callers. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639, man. Call in. You know what I'm saying? We talking football tonight. We talking Jets O line. We talking quarterbacks. We talking other free agents. You know, the Jets could possibly go after. We're bringing it all. So we're going to keep getting to these lines. Going, this is my guy from North Carolina, man. I think this is my dude from North Carolina on the line. This guy knows his stuff. Listen, I'm coming straight out the gate with you. Give me your assessment of this offensive line, man. How are you feeling about it, and where do you think we need to improve going into the free agency? How are you doing, Joe? Good to speak with you again. Yeah, um, it's a work in progress. I love uh, Becton. You know, Becton is the lineman that all future prospects are going to be compared to, like Daniel Falele. But the rest of the yeah. unit is um, a lot to be desired. Um, I think if we can come out of free agency with one of the top tier linemen, whether it's um, uh, the cat from uh, the Patriots or one of the other top tier linemen in draft two, that might be what the doctor ordered to try to overhaul this line. We got we got to lay the foundation what we had back under Rex Ryan. We had uh, the Brickshaw Ferguson. We had Nick Mangold. You had some pieces, core pieces you could work with. Beckton is a stud, but we need a little bit more. We're going to need to look at the interior, probably guard, center, stabilize that and settle that down. And uh, I see some possibility with free agency. I, I, you know, obviously we can't blow what cap room we have. We're going to have to, you know, be, you know, somewhat frugal without being, you know, too cheap. 
But uh, I can see mm-hmm. them, you know, throwing it out there and trying to get one of the top tier offensive linemen because if they're going to reset the rookie quarterback uh, salary cap, and it looks like all the talk is around Zach Wilson, then I think he's going to be serious about trying to get at least one top tier free agent offensive lineman, and he'll probably draft one or two, and then he'll take a look at uh, what he drafted out of last year, and I think that's probably going to be the more likely scenario as far as the offensive mm-hmm. line, and I can I can I can roll with that. You know, I can roll okay. with that. Because right now, the unit, okay, so the unit look, is in flux. And, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm right now. To it. So when you look at this line right now, you look at the situation, you got Greg Van Roten. I think that could be yeah, on the chopping yeah. block. Also, Alex Lewis, that could be on the chopping block. Are you getting rid of both of those guys to save money on the cap and then chasing guys in free agency? I mean, what are you doing with those two guys? Well, I think as far as the center position, if I can bump him over the guard and, and see if he has some versatility going over the guard, I think um, i probably go that route with the center position. Guard, I'm going to look to re- replace it all, to, all together. I'm looking at Wyatt Davis in this upcoming draft on Ohio State, uh, several mm-hmm. other uh, offensive linemen to try to see if I can upgrade the interior. The, the interior is really where the biggest of the problems are. You know, uh, Becton is, is a stud. He's got a chance to be a future all-pro. Fant has been um, serviceable. You know, we knew he had the athletic traits, solid offensive linemen. It's going to be interesting to see with the new scheme how it's going to um, hopefully complement some of the offensive linemen we have, you know, right now like Fant and Becton. So that's something to keep an eye on. Because if we're going to bring a new quarterback in here, we better protect him. We can't do that nonsense like uh, Mike McCagden done, you know, patchwork in the offensive line. That's what put us in this position to begin with. You know, I've never – I've been watching football over 40 years. I've never seen a GM patchwork a lot. I just see kind of patchwork on defensive line, you know, get those guys at sixth round, fifth round, yeah. you know, launch fail, you know, put on your D-line. But I've never seen that done with an offensive line. I've never seen that before. Before McCagden did it with us, and it really, it really hurt us. And literally got Don or her, you know, early in his career, you know, foot injury, the bad yep. snaps, you know, saying that that's it's really been so long. Mind to put him over just to get hurt, you know, early in his career. So we're gonna have to put put our do our due diligence and uh, fix this offense. We have great great opportunity. We have cap flexibility, and we got multiple yeah. picks, so we couldn't be in a better spot. But what it is, they got to commit themselves to biting the bullet and doing it. I know everybody's tempted by. Uh, you know, saying uh, uh, Jamar Chase and Kyle Pitts and, you know, saying and uh, Travis Etienne, everybody's tempted by those players. They're great players, all of them great prospects, but we're going to need to do is stay disciplined, build this offensive line first, at least this year. If we can establish the fact yeah. we can run, run the ball like we used to under Rex Ryan and have solid pass detection, we'll be well on our way to turn this thing around. I think by next year will be a sure sign and we're turning it around, and we're going to be very tough, very physical, very competitive. But we got to fix this offensive line. That's a must. Because that, we're going to yeah, take that, that that's a I'm fact. a little nervous. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 like you were saying, that's a, that's a fact. We must fix this offensive line. You, when you brought up Mike McCagney and the patchwork that he used to do along the offensive yeah, line, I was yeah. just laughing because I used to tell people all the time, this duct tape and, and, and chicken wire whole thing that he does every single year, getting all mm-hmm. these guys that have been hurt, that have injury histories. Yeah. <laughs> guys that right. you know really weren't good linemen where they were before and then you're bringing them in here like they're going to be stars that that just is not a good idea that's right that's, that's right. not the way that you that's want right. to you know set the table for your quarterback I used to always tell people if you want your quarterback to eat you know if you want your offense to eat you got to set the table correctly you got to make sure the guys that's are properly right. protected right. if you don't do that yeah you're not you're not going to have a good you know good offense period and we've seen that's right. the outcome of that but you talked about free agency yeah. a bit and people have talked about it as well you know, tonight, we've been talking about Joe Thune all night. And yeah. I want to get your thoughts on this. You talk about going in there and finding a guy. How much are you willing to pay Joe Thune a year to get him in here? What's, what's, your, uh, what's your cap? What is the most that you're willing to go? What's the highest you're willing to go until you say, you know what? I'm done. I'm, I'll go elsewhere. Yeah. What's the cap? To tell you the truth, I'm a Give me a number. of lineman of that caliber. you got to be thinking in the high team, somewhere like 16, 18 mil. The numbers are going to be high. It's going to be higher. Mm-hmm than it would be for maybe much of your other key positions on the field because of the nature of that position. you, you got to be thinking yeah. 18, 16, 18 mil, somewhere in that. Then when you start getting to 21 mil, 20, it's a little little steep, a little steep for your salary cap. Your money's going to go pretty fast. So I'm thinking 18 million, that's the number I'm capping off at. 
And if they're going to ask me for more than that, I say thank you, but no thank you. And I'm going to look at some of the other positions <laughs> and address the offensive line in the draft. We got pick 23. Yeah. Now, obviously, we can't use pick two because they're looking at quarterback. It's going to be Wilson or Fields. We know that. That's been in the books for weeks. Now, we got pick 23. Yeah. And we got pick 34. With those picks alone, we should be able to do something with this offensive line. There's a lot of names out mm-hmm. there. Christian Derrishaw, Wyatt Davis, uh, my man Daniel Falele. I want to look at probably in the third or fourth round. You know what I'm saying? He, he, they say he's a monster with a lot of upside potential, you know, need a little bit of development. So that's where my mind is, to, to kind of address this offensive line early. Maybe take free agency and address the wide receiver position, if you know what I'm saying. It's not to say I couldn't win in the draft, but we might need okay, to so, kind of address. Yeah. Yeah, let, well, let's talk about it. This is going to be my final uh, my final uh, question for you before I let you go. Yeah. But you talk about going yeah. to free agency and addressing that wide receiver position. Who's your number one target? Ooh. You got Kenny Galladay yeah. could possibly be out there. Chris Godwin could possibly be out there. Allen Robinson could be yeah. out there. Uh, some people like Will Fuller, yeah. Juju Smith. Who's your number one target? Give me, give me one guy. Kind of Galladay, uh, possibly Juju Smith, but Juju Smith, I think that's, that's your number one target. Answer. Possibilities, yeah. Some of the, the uh, extracurricular okay. stuff had to be cut out. I think with Juju, he's going to have to cut it out. <laughs> but uh, Galladay, probably Jeff. Stop Stone. all the dancing, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all yeah, that dancing and, and, and bull jiving, but you know, cut out some of that stuff. <laughs> you know, concentrate on on football. It's gonna be interesting to see if Solid can regulate <laughs> some of the behaviors and, and some of that stuff. But I question whether uh, yeah. uh, Joe Douglas is even gonna bring that kind of cat into our locker. I don't think he is. He'll probably kick yeah. the tires well, you on, know, on to you, but I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, you know, listen, I, I understand that people, you know, the dancing and the stuff like that on uh, social media has definitely brought some heat yeah. to Juju Smith. I get it. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. I understand. I mean, it's not Victor Cruz. And I understand you know, you why. Victor in the commercials and everybody like Victor Cruz. Yeah. You know, right? Victor was likable. Yeah, the yeah. So, 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 you know, it was likable that yeah. he came across, you know, he yeah. without and, showboat, and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and a lot of the dancing on, on team stuff. But, again, that that that's just you. listen, Juju, young, youthful guy. He likes social media, but the talent is there. The talent's there. Now, the yeah. thing about Juju, and I will I will agree with you. I, I I would like us to bring him in, but I don't know if he solves that number one that we need. I think he's a great number two. I mean, here he'd be a number yeah. one point blank period because we don't you know we don't have yeah. much. But is yeah. he like that go to number one that we need, like an Allen Robinson? Yeah. That's my number one target. But I do yeah. like Juju, and I like him bringing him in as well. So. Allen Robinson would definitely be my number one ta- target, but that price tag is going to be pretty high, man. It's going to consume a lot yes, of our time. You know, that money's going to go fast. Once we start getting into the yeah. crazy and players start moving around out there, it's going to go mm-hmm. fast. I don't know. It's not to say yeah, I don't want is. But I'd rather take that money and invest it in my offensive line. To me, it's offensive line, edge rush. And those are the two two premium positions, you know what I'm saying? If I'm going to pay that hefty yeah. price, you're talking about like a $20 million uh, payday per year, if I'm going to pay that, it's going yeah. to be for an offensive lineman, may, mainly tackle, or it's going to be an edge rusher, not wide receiver. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's too many good wide receivers in this draft. Terrence Marshall, uh, Rasheed Bateman, yeah. those are possibilities at uh, 23 or 34. I'm thinking that too. So I don't think we need to get crazy and spend too much money. You know what I'm saying? So how do you compare those mm-hmm. wide receivers of free agency to um, Pearman? Do you think they're upgrades over Pearman, clear upgrades over him, which I'm hoping they are? What What do you mean? The the three I just named? The Chris Godwin and yeah. Kenny Galladay? Yeah, and... uh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Those are <laughs> – dude, it is night and day. <laughs> like, night and oh, – it's, it's not even close. That's why I do what not do want to have anything to do with Pearman bringing back Rashad Pearman. Pearman. So you just Listen, think, think they're just, just better, better ball players they're all around. They're just plain and better. Yeah, th- those guys are just plain better. I mean, okay. point blank period. Even without – you know, because yeah. Rashad Pearman, yeah, the injuries and stuff, but Rashad Pearman is not a number one wide receiver. Period. He's a number one no. here, but he honestly, yeah, I don't think Bashar right. Perryman would be a number one anywhere in the division, anywhere in our division, no. AFC East. I don't think he'd be a number one wide receiver for any of those teams, any of the teams here, period. So it's like when you look at yeah. the situation, we have to go get a number one. We have to. We have to find some way. Whether it be in free agency, I understand the price tag is going to be high for Allen Robinson. I get it. 
But that type of yeah, talent, yeah. if you can get it, we have money. You know, we have it. We don't have to blow oh, yeah. everything. Right. We got it. But if we can't do that, then you got to do that. You could definitely yeah. got to do that in the draft. But listen, I got to get to the rest of these lines, my friend. It's I'm always closing. great to talk to you, I'll all right? Like I want you to have a good night, all right? Yeah, yeah you all right, too, you have buddy. A good night. Okay, all right, now. Peace out. Listen, my guy from North Carolina is phenomenal. I love talking to him. Love talking to him. Old Jets fans, he talks his stuff, man. Let's get his guy. Give him my friend. This guy knows his stuff. He does. I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. He knows his stuff, man. I love talking to that guy. And he gets me, gets me into the draft every single time. I don't know how he does it, but he always gets me to start talking about the draft, start mm-hmm. talking about things before, you know, super early, give away my early takes, all kinds of stuff. But we're going to keep getting to these lines. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep getting to them. Everyone, again, 515-602-9639. Again, 515-602-9639. I got callers. Please be patient. We'll get to everybody, all right? We're going to get to everybody. So we're going to go to my guy, Jason, next. Listen, Jason, I know you're coming on, my man. It's time to talk. It's time to talk about these Jets. It's time to talk about things that we got going on. It is time to talk how to fix this offensive line, my man. Give me your thoughts on Alex Lewis and Greg Van Roten. Are you releasing them to save money on the cap and chasing one of the top offensive line targets in free agency? Are you doing that? Absolutely, especially with Greg Wolf's, um Greg Rowan. I will release him. I will actually release. Actually, I will keep Alex Lewis as a backup um, guard just because we need a backup. But um, Greg would want he needs to go. I'm sorry, but I don't feel like he can keep up, especially when you can get Thunley out there. That he's a he is a star and can be so much great and can help mm-hmm. us in so many ways. You have to. Okay, so let me let me give you this then. If we're talking about that, you're going into free agency. You're looking at the top offensive line free agents. Joe Thune is a guy that pops up out there. Are you signing Joe Thune? And if you are, what is your cap, man? I mean, what is the most that you're willing to spend on Thune before you back away and say, hey, this is just too much? Um, well, at this point, the offensive line needs help no matter what. So I'm at this point, I'm going to probably put up – any the the number any number he wants to make sure he comes to you. <laughs> we have the money. So we have the money to do yeah. this. Oh, yeah, no, you you're right. You're you're right. You're right. We do have the cash, but if he comes to you and says, "Listen, I want 19 million a season." Are you doing it? Yes. Okay. Well, if we if Joe okay. Dudley is serious about building this whole line. This is this is the way of doing it. And it might be expensive, but we have the money to do it. Jason said, I'm not playing around, man. <laughs> I'm not playing around. I want to solve this issue. I want to solve this position. Let's make it happen. I respect that. I respect that. I respect that. All right, Jason, now we, we talked a little bit about the offensive line, but I want to talk about the Carson Wentz trade with you, man. You look at this situation, he got traded for a third rounder this year, conditional second rounder next year. Now there's a lot of people that want to move on from Sam Darnold, and, you know, they thought they can get a first. When you look at that trade, what kind of impact do you think that that has on Sam Darnold's value in the market, you know, possibly for a trade as well? Well, um, it's very interesting because one one of the probably top teams that was going to probably give us a first or a late first was the Colts. So now the Colts have the guy – and so it does – to say it doesn't impact us not one bit is by a lie because it does mm-hmm. because that probably lost us the best chance of getting a first one pick because I don't see the Saints trying to trade. Saints did call it about the Jets, but they didn't look serious into it. And Steelers mm-hmm. doesn't look like – they may just go with what Big Ben. And so I think we lost our first one pick with – our best chance, which is what's the Colts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking that talk, man. So my final question for you is, you know, you look at this situation, going to free agency, there's a lot of questions, particularly about Joe Douglas. He, he's pretty frugal, man. Are you concerned that he won't be as aggressive in free agency this year, you know, the same way that he wasn't really aggressive this last year? You know, a lot of people concerned that he'll bring that same attitude in, in this year's free agency and we might miss out on some guys. Are you concerned about that as well? Well, to be honest, I am a, to say that I have, if I didn't have any concern would be a lie. I do have a little concern 
the Kitsuni bit's there. But as of remember last year, he did. He was going to go against, um, do a strong push against Sunley until the Patriots um, fighters tagged him in the last second, which messed everything up. So we, so it will be interesting to see what we've done there. Would he bring the bag for him? Who knows? We will never know. Mm. But it's interesting now to see if he's going to do it this time. But yeah, I am a little concerned about it because he likes to. Mm-hmm. Because look what he did with Robbie Anderson. He he tried yeah. to play low ball, and we lost out on a good receiver. Mm. That that you know these takes you're bringing on fire. Man. Give him a hand. Give him a hand, man. Give him a hand, man. was an excellent point that that because that's true uh they were definitely going back and forth with robbie and they ended up losing out to the panthers and he went there and like you said as well joe thuny was one of the targets rumored to be you know a target by joe douglas and once he got did get franchised by the patriots kind of like at the last second almost that kind of blew up some plans there but there were other guys jack conklin there was other guys that could have been out there but he just you know he didn't didn't go after those guys he stuck to his plans that's how we ended up with fant and Rashad Perryman and all these other guys that we brought in. But, Jason, listen, man, I want to thank you for calling in, my friend. You have a good night, all right? You too. Hey, before I go, though, can I say one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Um, with the whole Jamal Adams thing, since he took a shot at us Jets fans, I would take a sh- I'm would i about to take a shot at him. All of our Jets fans and Russell Wilson knows deep down that he would rather have those two first-one picks and a third-one pick than having him. We all know it. Mm. Okay. Good shot, man. You have a good night, Jason. You too. Whew. Listen, J- Jason had a little, you know, he had some words. I, you know, he had some words for Jamal. Everybody does. You know what I mean? So I'm going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639. Call in. Do not curse when you call into my show because I'll get you out of here. I'm talking fast. Fast. Faster than we got Jamal Adams out of here for those two first round picks. <laughs> It was fast, baby. Woo. I remember talking about getting rid of that bum for years. Overrated box safety. Jamal Adams couldn't cover a bed with a bed sheet. That's the truth. <laughs> That's the truth. We get back to the lines. 848. Looks like a brand new caller. 848. I'm coming directly to you, giving your name, where you're from, and what is your assessment as Jets offensive line, man? What's up, Joe? Um, I, I'm Anthony. I live in New Jersey. Um. Obviously, you're going to be cutting like guys like Greg Van Rotten, Alex Lewis, because I think in free agency, you should go after a guy like Joe Thune, in my opinion, who's been like one of the best guards mm-hmm. in the league, and that's something the Jets like really, really need. Yeah, yeah. And salute to you, Anthony. I want to and thank you And you're also for probably going to look into the draft. First time call. Mm-hmm. And guys like Wyatt Davis, maybe Trey Smith mm-hmm. in the third round, you're going to look Joe Douglas, in my opinion, is going to be looking at a lot of guys in free agency in the draft when it comes to building an offensive line. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I think the draft is definitely going to be a big, uh, you know, a big wealth of talent for us. I think that, you know, especially with the capital that that we have, especially with some of the guys that we're going to be able to go after in this year's draft. Uh, you know, particularly, especially if we trade down, if we trade down in this year's draft, we can definitely gain even more capital to help. Uh, you know, better yeah. our offensive line. So there's there's definitely. definitely some options out there for us. But I want to get your thoughts on this because you talked about, you know, going to free agency because you're moving on from Greg Van Roten. You're moving on from Alex Lewis, which I understand you want to get rid of those guys. But who is yeah. your top offensive line target? Who's the guy that you want to see the Jets aggressively go go and get? Uh, I was talking about um, my number one target when it comes to, uh, like, guards and all that is Joe Thune because this is – like I said, this guy's one of the best guards in the league, and I really think the Jets can use a guy. We can actually sign him this year when we, he ended up getting franchise tagged by the Patriots last year. I was really mad when that happened, but I really hope we can make it up this year and sign him. Okay, so how much are you giving if, – if you're the general manager, you're Joe Douglas, Joe Thune comes to you, how much are you willing to give him? What is your cap before you say, look, this is just too much, it's too rich for my blood, I'm out of here? Listen, listen, dude. But do you think he's gonna go? He's, if he were were to go to the Jets, do you think he would get paid like a lot, like a decent amount? Yeah. Maybe like eight million. 
Yeah, I think, in my opinion, I would probably give him, like, a three-year deal with, like, $8 million a year, in my opinion. $8 million a year for Joe Thune? I thought I, I'd do that. Bro, we have J- – Yeah, listen, no, we I, yeah, I, yeah, I know you would. I, like anybody the in the league thing. would do that, but I don't think Joe Thune is coming to your team for $8, $8 million a year. Maybe eighteen. You think it's gonna be? You think you know, it's gonna he's be more? definitely gonna get paid. Yeah. Oh, for sure he's gonna get paid more in the open. Yeah, I know. I this know guy is one of the best guards in the league. Eight it's million not the best. But listen, you know, am I? Opinion, I don't really see too many guards get paid so much. I just don't really see it that much. You know what I mean? Oh, there's there's def, there's definitely guards out there getting paid for sure. I know. Uh, there's I guards out there but making. Not, but I don't, there's not too many, in my opinion. Well, he's a top level guard though. He's a top yeah, level no, I, guard. I, I, so even if you say not too many, he's a, he would definitely be in the in the talks of being a guy that should be a top level paid guard. So if he is, again, there's you know, you you're not gonna get you're not gonna get him for just eight million. I think you're gonna have to give up yeah, you know yeah, I might have to you're gonna have to give be, up quite a bit and it's gonna be more than eight million a year. But look, yeah. I, I hear your take yeah. there and I respect it, you know, but I, I wanna go I wanna go to the talk about Carson Wentz and the trade and how can it impact, you know, the situation with Sam Darnold. Are you a guy that wants to move on from Sam Darnold? Listen, listen, man, I'm, I've been a Sam Darnold fan. I would always defend him and all that. I would like say, mm-hmm. like, look at the team he had and stuff like that. Look who was coaching him and all that. But as a big Sam Darnold fan, I just think it's just time to move on at this point. bro. I, in my opinion, he's just that one guy. I, I think he can go somewhere else and succeed. He can pull Ryan Tannehill and go somewhere else and succeed. I just think New York's just not the best place for him, in my opinion. If you put him on a team like the Saints, the Bears, the the Washington football team, whatever, I think he's going to be able to succeed. I'm I'm just really mad that I'm really like really sad about him that it just didn't work out here. So yeah, okay, it's it just was, time to move on. And, and I hear you, but my 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 question for you is is if you want to move on from Sam Darnold, then what exactly do you think you're absolutely going to get for him? Like, do you think you'll be able to get a first rounder for him? I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna be able to get more than Carson Wentz went for him. Because you, Joe, you you can disagree with me, but I just think Darnold's gonna end up being a better player than Carson Wentz in in the future. He's four years younger. Mm-hmm. I think he has more. He, in my opinion, I think he has more potential. And mm-hmm. you just have to realize he hasn't he hasn't had a chance to be good. In my opinion, I just I know I just don't think he has. He's had a chance. He hasn't. Had the best receivers in the world. You had to see who was mm-hmm. coaching him. Not even just Gates. You had Jeremy Bates as, all, as his offensive coordinator, and look, that didn't work out either. He played better on the Jeremy Bates, but it wasn't too much better. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I have a question then. If you're if you're saying that, here we um, go. If you're saying all those things, he hasn't been coached correctly. Uh, he hasn't had yeah. the offensive weapons. He hasn't been protected correctly. You're saying all those things. He's younger. And he he's hasn't had a be strong, than strong defense. You're right. You're right. Um, then if you're saying all those things, can you please explain to me why you're trading Sam Donald then? Why do you want to get it's rid just, of him? Why can't we just keep him to, and succeed with him? It's just like, it's just, in my opinion, it's just a little risky in my opinion. Because like, and I'll also, yeah. I'm a but Sam you just told us just a second ago. You just to told us that you think he's going to be better than Carson Wentz ever was. You think that yeah, he's going to have more talent. He's, he's younger. Market, he's got all the attributes that you could possibly think of to be a great quarterback in this league. You just said that yourself. So how is it risky if you're looking to get a first round pick for him? How is it risky to continue to move forward with him? Because you yourself say you believe in his talent and everything that he can do, I but he hasn't had the true opportunity and chance else, to succeed in this league. Else. Somewhere else I can believe But him. why not I, here? With the Jets, I just don't know. But why not here, though? Jets, though. I just don't. I just yeah, don't. and I understand. And why, I also, but but my, my question for you is, though, mind. why not here? You say go somewhere else. What, what changes also, somewhere else? Not, Joe, the let, talent let level, the coaching – because we have better coaching here, right? Our talent level is being raised because we finally have a general manager that understands yep. what to do in the draft. We have a guy that yep. understands what to do in free agency this year as well. With the Mike McCagnins are gone. The Adam Gazes of the world are gone. All those guys are gone. They can't hurt us anymore. We're in a better space. Fin- uh, we're in a yeah. better space financial-wise. We're also in a better space in our franchise-wise. So can you please explain to me why Sam can't succeed here? It's just – and my point is, like, I'm not going to be against it if it happens. I'm just saying, I just, 
there's you have to look at the other quarterbacks that are coming out in the draft. You have possibly a Deshaun Watson trade soon. So I just mm-hmm. like I'd rather go for those guys. It's just it's not I'm okay. not trying to say that it's that's just me. Literally, I'm not gonna be against okay. if we end up keeping six, which I don't think it's gonna happen. I'm just saying I wouldn't be against it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, look, Anthony, listen, I respect you and I respect your takes. I gotta get to the rest of these callers though, Anthony. It was great to speak to you, man. You got some some great takes on you. Please call in again, man. I wanna hear from you when I do my next show, all right? It was really nice talking to you. Absolutely. All right, you have All a good right, night, my friend. Time. You too. All right. Listen, listen, Anthony calling in with fire. I'm just – I'm going to challenge your points. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to challenge your points. If you tell me that you think Sam Darnold is the bee's knees, if that's what you're going to do, you know what I'm saying, and you telling me, I think he's amazing, but I think we need to get rid of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just – you know, I'm just, I'm just asking you questions. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm doing. I'm not sad. Not me. Not me, guys. You think Sam Donald's amazing? I just need to know. Why are we trading him? You're smoking crack. Stop. That's all. I'm just asking questions. So I'm going to get back to these lines. 818, I'm coming to you, man. 818, I'm coming directly to you. It's my guy, Jacob. Ah. <sighs> Jacob, thank you for calling in tonight. It's great to speak with you. Give me your thoughts yeah, great to talk to you too. of this offensive line, my friend. Um, I think it's got a promising future, but I think there's definitely some moves to be made. I think cutting Greg Van Roten, I'm not so sure because he's not the most expensive guy, but I think Alex Lewis, I, I believe his cap hits like $7 million or something like that. And yeah, somewhere I there. think it was nice for us to bring him back last year when he showed some promise. But this year, I mean, he was out with personal health issues. Um, so I don't think it's worth keeping him around. I think he's a great guy, but I think you got to put feelings to the side when it comes to football some of the time. Yeah, yeah. I look at the situation and I say to myself, Alex Lewis, um, we all know, you know, had an issue, you know, I mean, reported that there was an issue between him and uh, a coach that is no longer here as well. Um, and I look at the situation and I say to myself, you know, his play was very uh, up and down, even when he was on the field. Um, to me, I would get rid of Van Roten too, because I don't think Van Roten is very good at all. You look at some of his play, he uh-huh. costed us in the, line, in the Niners game, missed a block. Like there was big time issues up front. And I understand that people look at those guys and they're like, hey, they're cheap, you know. I mean, you could save some money, you know, getting rid of Van Roten as well. I think it's like $3.4 million saved. And I look at that and I yeah. say, we can take that cash. You know, you save, with, like, you, like you said as well, you save that cash from Lewis, which I think is somewhere like 5 to $7 million, something like that. You take that cash and you add, add Van Roten's cash, you can go get an upgrade there along the offensive line, which we all know that we need. You know what I'm saying? I think we'd all agree that this offensive line needs to be better and be improved. Now, for me, the first thing I'm doing is I'm saying to myself, I understand that the draft is there. I get it. But, man, <laughs> some of these linemen in free agency, whew, these guys are some right. guys I'd love to bring in. Now, I like Joe Thune. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I like Joe Thune for sure. Um, what are your thoughts mm-hmm. about him? And, you know, is he the top lineman you'd like to see brought in? Um, I think it's interesting. I think Joe Thune is definitely one of the top two for me, but – for me personally, I actually like Corey Lindsley a bit more than I like Joe Thune, uh, mainly because okay. he's able to play. He's able to play center for us. And when we brought in Connor McGovern last year, he had actually played guard for like a majority of his career. And we asked him to come here and play center. And I don't think he did a bad job, but I think if we can actually bring in, I think Corey Lindsley was actually the top center in the league this past season. If we can bring him mm-hmm. in and slide Connor McGovern back to his main position and see how he does there, rather than trying to force him into a different position that he wasn't really familiar with, I think that would actually set us up for more success. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I respect that. I absolutely respect that. You look at the situation as well. I'm wondering about Joe Douglas because other people are, are looking at him too and saying, Hey, right. this is a guy that we definitely think, you know, he's a heck of a GM, but we're a little concerned about curious about, you know, his habits in free agency, not spending. Are you concerned about that as well? Do you think he'll go into this year's free agency and be extremely conservative? Uh, I don't think he'll be nearly as conservative as last year. I think last year, really, he just, 
he had a vision for the future. I think he probably thought to himself, all right, well, this crazy eyed dude named Adam Gates, he's going to be out of here next year. This season's sort of a waste. Uh, you know, I don't I don't want to waste all our money on just guys who are going to help us go three and 13 instead of two and 14. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right. You know, um, but I think this year he'll definitely be a little bit less conservative. I think he's not going to go full on overboard to get some of the top guys. I think he'll be able to go a little bit over what he would like to, if it means getting some of the guys here, but I think he's still going to be a smart general manager about it. Like, I don't think he's going to go, if Allen Robinson were trying to get him for 20 million and he wants, you know, 21 or 22, I think he'll do it. But if he wants 25, 26 million, I think he'll say, you know, have a nice day. I don't think he'll be too aggressive. Like not nearly like the Mike McCagnon area where just overpaying just tremendously for guys who are just out of here already. Like Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. 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 That, I mean, that's a great take there, man. Listen, I got to get back to these lines. It was great to speak to you tonight. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you. All right, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Can I say one more thing also? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So I know every time you tell people, you know, don't swear or you'll be out of here faster than Jamal Adams was traded. Instead, you could actually say, don't swear on my show or you'll be out of here faster than we cut Le'Veon Bell from his contract. That would work too. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. He, he had he took <laughs> Salute to you, man. You have a good night, all right? Hey. <laughs> you know, he took the shot at Le'Veon before he ran off, man. You know, it, it is what it is. You know, I respect Le'Veon Bell. I like Le'Veon Bell a lot, but, you know, that guy's a savage, man. He's one of the dudes, you know, that be in the chat. And nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. We're going to keep getting to these lines, man. We're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639. You could call in. Please be patient when you call in. I get to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, you got callers, so we're going to talk to everybody. But I'm getting back to these lines again. Took that shot before he ran off. Mike, I'm coming to you. Mike, 845, I'm coming directly to you, Mike. Mike, I want you to Yo, give you me doing? your thoughts, man. How you doing, man? Hey. Listen, I want you to give me your thoughts about this offensive line, my man. Give me your thoughts. What well, is your assessment of I, them? I think you and I are going to drop the, uh, respectfully drop the gloves tonight. Um uh, and the reason I'm saying that is is that uh, Joe Douglas came in. He was smart about it. And I think he did make some questionable uh, free agency moves at center. He brought that retired from the Panthers case in point. Yeah, uh, Mac Lill. I think he has a plan, and I think he's going to stick to it. Uh, we're not going anywhere in the next two years. That doesn't mean we should mail in the year. It doesn't mean we, we – we, uh, but that does mean that we should not overspend for free agency. We should progressively mm-hmm. get better, younger and better so that we're positioned in two years. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, I go back to the uh, different sport, the New York Rangers, about 20 years ago. They were spending out, out, out the wazoo on free agents, and they had all of this talent. They couldn't mesh them together and make a team out of it. So I think that really what I'm trying to say is that he's got to stick to his plan, add value where you mm-hmm. can for a reasonable price. Even though we have money, you just can't piss it away. You have to be yeah. – in a position where in two years from now you can make a critical move to get one or two pieces, you know, to, to, to finish the puzzle. So with that being said, let me back up a little bit. Um, there's a lot of different variables to look at. And as long as he's progressively upgrading, because uh, obviously, you know, you know, we've talked before, offensive line, defensive line, that's where the games, game is won and lost, obviously. And then the Facts. rest, you know, that I would say, uh, other than obviously quarterback is critical, but other than that, then you'd want, I would think, quarterback to shore up and then, let's say, an edge rusher. But um, so, uh, you know, on the offensive line, I say, you know, get what you can get. But I would not go after these high-priced free agencies. We're two years away. Look what, what, what we did with uh, – uh, uh, what's the guy's name? The, the, the uh, uh, inside linebacker. Uh, um, he's 18 yeah. million a year from, from Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, and he's a great guy. I'm sure, sure he's a great character guy. But you pay $18 million a year, and there are some things that happen, right? So let's say he played and we won a couple more games, yada, yada. But, I mean <laughs> – 
you know, we're yeah, still not going to be here. Listen, about a couple of years. Why are you going to pay this guy? Yeah, no, know, listen. And first off, Mike, I want to thank you for calling in. Look, I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But to compare the signing of Mosley to who is a non, you know, uh, impact, who plays a non impact position to a guy like Joe Thune, who literally, um, you know, is, is a is a sticking point on your off on your offense. You find a guy that can block and do the things that he does. Not only does he better your quarterback, right? Not only do you understand, you know, Agreed. that he, he keeps the quarterback upright. He's not running for his life, but the running game also improves behind him too. Agreed. I understand not Agreed. wanting to pay too many, too many, um, you know, overpriced free agents or guys, you know, that are just going to get their money. I get that. I'm all about it. But I'm also looking at a situation and I'm saying to myself, you can still utilize free agency to better yourself and then mix that in again with the draft. I'm not saying buy our entire team through free agency. Mike McCagney used to try to do that, and we saw what happened. Yeah. <laughs> we we right. failed, you know what I'm saying, because we didn't have cash. I'm, I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying let's pick our spots because l- let, me, let, me, let me say this. You look at a team like the Bills, right? The Bills, yeah. what did they do? They utilized that as well. Um, Diggs, uh, uh, Cole Beasley, uh, John Brown, they didn't draft those guys. They didn't draft those right. guys. Those guys are not, were not drafted by the Bills. They came from somewhere else, right? But they utilized free agency to get the guys in there to help Josh Allen continue to be a better quarterback, right? They did what Agreed. it took. I mean, they, they made trades, but they got the other two guys in free agency, but they're paying guys. They're paying Diggs to be there. They're paying those guys. So if we can utilize free agency to maybe get one or two guys, mix it in with the draft, right? And again, I don't know if we're, uh, you know, I don't know if you're, you know, trying to, I don't know exactly what the plan is going to be in the draft. I think we should trade down, but if we could trade down, we can also, we have a wealth of picks. We also got what well, we got four, four first rounders in the next two years. We got a lot, we got a lot of stuff. Right. So right. you could end up really drafting a team that could be better. I personally believe that we could be a team if we do this correctly. And I've talked about this. I think we could be contending within the next two years. Truly. I'm not saying we win in the Super Bowl, but I'm talking making a push to be a really solid playoff team. You know what I mean? So I don't think I agree. That we should I back agree. away from but, free agency, but we need to be smart about it. That That's my point. And I think Thune, Agreed. for me, that, Thune, for me when you Let look me at the offensive bit. line and the way they played this year, Thune, for me, is, is one of my top free agents that I want on this football team. Go ahead. I'll let you get the last word. All right. All right. So, so, so let me back up a little bit. So Joe Douglas is in the driver's seat for hiring the coach, right? Salah, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Robert Salah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm sure they have a somewhat of a general closely aligned philosophy, which is step number one for, for, for they think alike where, you know, they're not like, you know, that they're along the same lines in in the way they think. So it's really the way I see this plan out is that it's going to come down to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, uh, uh, figure out the quarterback position. Is Sam, are they going to collectively agree that Sam is going to work or not going to work? And then, you know, if not, they'll trade him and, and, and they'll move on to the quarterback. Once they have that, then they're, I think they're going to be hand in glove looking at, you know, where do we need to upgrade and where are we willing to push the envelope? All I'm saying is that I agree that we need to go through the predominantly through the draft and free agency. All I'm saying in New York sports historically, or a lot of times, we've seen we're going after names that don't necessarily fit the philosophy or the puzzle. I'm just saying be careful of that. But you can, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have to go from the bottom of the scrap heap. Uh, and obviously it's going to be it's going to be a combination. But, uh, you know, and I agree with you. The offensive line, I've told you before, and we've discussed it before, offensive line and defensive yeah. lines are critical. That's where the game is won and lost. So we're not far off. I'm just saying, be careful yeah. of the high flyers with the big names and, and, and that. But oh, for sure. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I, I completely what they understand do with that. The that's why the guys you know? that I'm targeting. Yeah, no, I hear you, and that's why the guys that I'm targeting, Joe Thune, we he's been in our division. Like we see, he's dominated us for quite some time. <laughs> he's dominated us for quite some time. You know what I mean? Like that guy's the real yeah. deal. And again, Allen Robinson is one of my targets too. I believe he's a real deal. You look at him; he's never really had a good quarterback. Still been making plays though. Still. Yeah. I was hoping that we would get him the last time he went to free agency. But I understand your point there. You want to be careful. You don't want to end up with a Tremaine Johnson. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But I right. definitely want to attack free agency. But listen, Mike, I got to get back to the rest of these lines, man. They're heating up. Got quite a bit of callers. It was great to talk to you, my man. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, Mike, man. I love your takes. I love going back and forth with you, all right? You as well. Stay well. All right. You have a good one. 
Listen, Mike be calling in, man. Me and Mike definitely go back and forth. You know, we agree on a lot, but there's a lot of things we don't agree on. You know what I'm saying? And, and we definitely got to talk that talk. So I'm going to keep getting to these lines. You know what I'm saying? Again, 515-602-9639. We're going to keep going. We've got quite a bit of callers. We're going to get to everybody. Be patient. Do not call until my show cursing. i get you out of here. Fashion, we got Jamal Adams. <laughs> Stop talking about the Jets and all your interviews, you bum. You know what I'm saying? Go find somebody to cover. You know what I mean? You're missing guys left and right on the field. Overrated box safety. 646, I'm coming directly to you. 646, new caller. Give me your name, where you're from. You know what I'm saying? Give me your name, where you're from. And what are your thoughts about the Jets offensive line? What's your assessment? 646? Yeah, hello. Hello, once. Yeah, 646, I can hear you. Uh, first your first time calling, what's your name, where you're from? What are your thoughts on the Jets' offensive line? What's your assessment of them? Hey, what's up, Joe? It's Colin from Long Island. Um, oh, what's going on, Colin? Yeah. So, love the show, by the way. Um, I always watch. I think I call in tonight for the first time. Um, yeah, thank you so much, man. Donald, thank you so much for supporting yeah. the, uh, the, the content. Go ahead. Yeah, no problem. So, as far as Sam Darnold is concerned, I – I didn't think he was worth the first round pick um, when everyone else was saying, "Oh, we may get a first and all that." I think I think if we get a late second, third, that's that's um, I'm happy with that. Um, mm. So, as far as the offense line, you know, we drafted Beckton, so I'm happy there. Um, I I think for me, Joe Douglas to me is not a guy that's going to go and spend the money for Tooney. Um, okay. I just feel like Joe Douglas, I just feel like he's not going to spend a lot of money on any one player. Um, I think he may look to maybe get like a Wyatt Davis in the second round or, mm-hmm. you know, an, an, an offensive, an offensive person in the second round. I don't think, I don't think okay. he's going to spend 17 million a year on Tooney, um, which would be the ideal thing to do, but I just don't think he's going to do that. Okay, so going back to just really quickly, because you, you, you have some takes that you threw out there. You're looking at Sam Darnold, and I know you're saying you're looking to get at least a second-round pick for him. Are you a guy that wants to move on from him? Are you, and if so, who exactly are you targeting? Are you a guy that wants to get into Deshaun Watson's sweepstakes? Are you looking to draft a quarterback? What are you, what are you trying to do there? Uh, so I would definitely move on from Sam Darnold, being that we have the second pick. I just feel like with that second pick, we just have so much options. We can go – a Zach Wilson, a Justin Fields, we can, you know, try to trade to get Deshaun Watson. I think, I think if you can get Watson, you have to do whatever you can do, right? So the Jets, tra- okay. do whatever you have to do to get Watson. Um, but if you oh, what's the cap though? Watson, when when you say out. whatever you have to do, Texans um, could be looking for quite I, a bit. Are you willing to give up four first round picks? Let's say, let's say they ask for, so, for the next four first round picks that we have for the next two years, a second round pick, a third round pick, and Quentin Williams. Are you doing that? Not not giving up Quinn and Williams, but I would I would give up the the first the two the two first round picks this year, right? Okay. And like they would say, if push comes to shove, I'll give up the the next two next year. Because if you think about it, we're we're giving up our two first and Jamal Adams, right? In two years, and that, no, that's no, your I, first. I understand that take. Uh, yeah, I, I I get that take, but again. They're giving you a generational quarterback. I understand, right. you know, because that, that, that trade will be comfy for us. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not denying the logic behind that. I've heard that take. But, again, when people say that, I say, okay, well, I understand that basically we'd be giving up Jamal Adams because we got those two first-round picks for him. But why would the Texans right. take that when they're giving up a generational quarterback? Those things are priceless. We know the quarterbacks in this league are just one of the most – well, the most coveted position, especially quarterbacks that are like him, Right. Guys that just they're out the they're out the door. You know what I'm saying? Like he's serious business. Right. He's proved it year in and year out. So when you look at the Texans, if they do trade him, they're going to be asking for a haul because they literally have to rebuild their entire franchise. They ain't got nothing. Once right. he's gone, they ain't got nothing. <laughs> like the, right. They need it all. So that's why. And again, that's right. why the rumors are flying, especially from the uh, the Texans reporters. Well, I think his name is McLean. He's talked about it. You know, he he said time and time again. You know that. Quinnen Williams is a name that he keeps bringing up. That's what the that's what the Texans should get because they're going to need somebody on the defense, but they're also going to need you know picks and capital for the future as well to continue to build that offense. But 
you know, there's a lot of a lot of Jets fans as well. They're battling back. They're not willing to give up some of the some of the uh, you know the the capital that I think that the the Texans would need. But look, I hear you. I hear you there. But let's say we go yeah. into the draft because you talked about you talked about yeah. Justin Fields. You talked about uh, yeah. Zach Wilson. Who's who's the guy you want selected there? Right. Say Deshaun Washington so, gets traded somewhere else. He's gone. Yeah. You want to move on from Sam Darnold. What is the guy that you're picking at two? Are you taking Justin Fields at two? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm taking Fields. I know a lot of okay. a lot of Jets fans are saying Wilson, and I'm. I'm just a believer of having a guy like Fields over Wilson, just more so because of the size. Like, um, I'm a little. I'm a little nervous about Wilson being. You know, and when 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 they finally do the measurements and the weighing, you know, he may only mm-hmm. come in at like two two ten. I you know, I'm just I'm just afraid <laughs> that once he starts getting hit with these these yeah. you know these big guys on defense, that he's not going to hold yeah. up. Um, and you know, everyone is you know like everyone right now is knocking on fields, but I just feel like for me, um, you know, from from. His two years, right, in college and what he has done, you know, he's played well yeah. in big games. You know, he he had a couple of bad games. Every 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 great great quarterback have bad games. Peyton Manning in his first year in the NFL threw for 26 touchdowns and 26 interceptions. So you know, yeah. go figure, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean there... listen, you know, everyone has their opinion, but for me, I I think feels fit better, right, in mm-hmm. the in the New York market. And I just feel like he has that higher ceiling, and that's the guy I would go for. Okay. Look, I respect that, Colin. Listen, I got to get back to these calls, man. You lit it up tonight. Get to give this man a round, man. Give this man a round of applause. This guy, this guy knows his stuff, man. Like, just give him a hand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Don't get too crazy. Don't get too crazy. In the studio, Don't get too crazy. Cut it down. You know what I mean? These people get out of control. Don't need to clap it too hard for everybody. All right? We love everybody. We respect everybody. You know, don't clap too hard. But salute to you, Colin. Again, thank you for calling in. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, my man. You gave some great takes tonight. You have a good night, all right? Yeah. All right, Joe. Take care. All right. Have a good one. Listen, you know, my, my in-studio audience, man, they, you know, they get a little crazy. They be clapping a little too hard for some people. You know what I'm saying? Cheer for me. You know what I'm saying? Cheer for me a little bit. That's all I want. I, you know, Where's my where's my audience? Where's my audience? Thank you. A little bit of something. Can I? Thank you. Thank you. Y'all can, you know. We're gonna keep getting to these lines though, man. Again, five one five six zero two nine six three nine. You can call in. We're gonna keep going to these lines. When you do call in, please be patient. You know what I'm saying? Please be patient. I'm getting to everybody. Listen, I'm getting to my guy Freddie from Baltimore. Yeah. Listen, Freddie be calling in. Freddie be calling in. I, you know, he be calling in crazy. He be wilding. You know, I, I, I respect Freddie. I, you know, I like Freddie a lot. But Freddie, Freddie be talking that talk. He gonna give you his take. So Freddie, salute to you. Thank you for calling in tonight. It's great to hear from you. I want you to give me your thoughts about this offensive line, Freddie. You know, are you getting rid of Alex Lewis and Greg Van Roten, man? What are you doing? Greg Van Roten, yeah. Alex Lewis, no. You know. He, he he did all okay. that, especially towards the end of the season, you know. Uh, Joe um, Joe Douglas, he I, I, I trust him, especially. I mean, he, yeah, he made a, a few bad calls, you know, and when he first got here. But you got to remember the situation is the, the, the offensive line was in shambles. You know, he grabbed who he could. You know, he pulled the dude out of retirement to the lesson man, but but he did, you know, because he was trying to fix. You know, on the slot. You know, now yeah. I agree with you when you're talking about Joe Thune. He'll spend the money to get him because he knows how important it is to have our offensive line. Plus, Joe, let me ask you a question. Last season, even though the Jets was messing up when they went on ahead and won them two games towards the end, the offensive line looked pretty good. <laughs> no, well, I'm towards the end. Um, it, there, but, okay. but again, that was towards the Listen, hold on. That was towards the end of the season. They were playing decently. But let's not get confused about what about the entire season. Did you Do you remember that no. Niners game? Do you remember that Colts game? 
Do you want me to keep going about the games that we saw where guys are – what about let's, – let's go to that Denver game when Makai Becton, Ooh. right, when he played uh-huh. and then he went out with that shoulder issue. Did you watch the offensive line that game? Did you watch guys literally <laughs> – Sam hiked the ball and dropped back, and there was a guy in his ear already, and he only had the ball for like two seconds. Look, yeah, yeah, I that, get that, that some <laughs> people are going to try to romanticize <laughs> – Certain players, look, <laughs> Freddie already know. Listen, I get that some people are going to start romanticizing players like Pat Elfin and all these guys. And, oh, yeah, they were playing really good towards the end of the year. Look, th- it's not just about the end of the year. It's about the entire season. Those guys were terrible starting the season. And never mind the fact that there were guys in and out because we had injuries. We need guys that are going to be able to play on a weekly damn basis. I'm not in love with bums. I want to move on. I want a better offensive line. I want what the Cowboys had. Remember when they were just running Zeke every play and everybody knew it was coming and there was nothing anybody could do about it? Y'all remember that? That's what I want. Yeah. That's what oh, I want. Yeah. And we yeah, can do yeah. that. And how because how we have the, the draft and we have capital. All I'm saying is that okay. I'm not saying we should buy five Joe Thunies. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying can we get one Joe Thuny and then go into the draft and continue to build? That's all I want, Freddie. Can we do that? <laughs> Joe, you preach it to the choir, yo. I want what you want. <laughs> I want what you want. When you were telling me that, I was like, ah. <laughs> I was closing my eyes and envisioning what you were saying. I was like, the perfect world. Well, yeah, man. You know, I, I, I agree, man. But you, you, yeah. you know what? In their defense, you got to remember that uh, they had the offensive scheme. Yeah, Adam Gay, you know, we don't know long time Gay, you know. And you might it just look like a scene from the longest yard when they just the stick a burnt road and they just straight bum rusting, you know. I was like, Wow. You know like, I got a bone to pick with you because I'll be listening to every word that comes out your mouth, man. You like I yeah. wanna trade that. You know, and, and I yeah. know from from your past shows you've been a Sam Donald guy. You know? I have, so yeah. so but I, but, I mean do you think that we've seen a large enough sample size to say it's time to move on from Sam Donald. That's what I want to know from you. Ooh, Freddie, this is this is a good question. So this is gonna, this will be the last question before I gotta let you go because I gotta call it. But okay. this is a great question, Freddie. Listen, I don't think I understand why people want to move on from Sam Donald. I get it, right? I understand that side of the take. But my problem is when you say a larger sample size, you've never seen Sam Donald with a competent offensive line. You've never seen Sam Donald with, like, real weapons, and you've never seen Sam Donald with competent coaching since he's been here. You've never seen that. Literally, if you go back last year and look at our plays, look at all the highlight plays from our offense, like 90% of them are him running for his life away from pressure, like running, (laughs) just taking off. And making a play. I, we just talked about it. Go back to that that, that Broncos game. He had a big run in that game because he took off because there was guys on his back already. So all of that stuff is like I don't necessarily see how you can properly um how you can properly assess him when he's never had any of those things here. And I and I think back to again, I watch that um S C guy, dude, he has never looked like this anywhere else. Ever. So I just think that we should give him a chance under weapons with real coaching and allow that to move forward. But uh, I got to get back to these, to these callers. My, Freddie, listen, I want to thank you for calling in, my man. You have a good night. Next time I have a show, Freddie, I want to hear from you, all right? You're a heck of a caller, man. All right, Joe. Hey, you have a great night. All right, too. you have a good one. Be safe, man. Same to you. Listen, Freddie be calling in, man. We're going to keep getting to these lines. 515-602-9639. Again, 515-602-9639. I'm coming to my guy, Chris, man. I'm going to my guy, Chris, 857 uh, 857, my guy, Chris. Listen, Chris, I want to thank you for calling in tonight. How are you doing? Give me your assessment of the offensive up? line, my man. What's going on? Well, I think that the uh, – hey, what's happening? I think the offensive line uh, needs some um, some free agents, and, and we need to go in the draft and get them, you know. So mm. I think that uh, if, you, if you're looking at – if Thune's available and he's the only guy – then you have to go mm-hmm. in, but there will be other suitors um, around them. Yeah, I'm just scared. What about Brandon Sheriff? Obviously. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, Ron Rivera is, a, is like an offensive lineman. He likes the guys in trenches. Yeah. So I think that he's probably going to be re-signed. So, okay. you know, I okay. think that, I think that um, 
possibly, um, you know, New England may let him go. I don't know what their cap situation mm-hmm. is. But, you know, from up here, you know, you're scared of letting New England um, linemen go to free agency because, you know, when once you once they get into another system, are they that good? That's mm. that's the question, you know, because you look at okay. the um, some of the guys that left that system when they go into another another uh, uh, place, they're not the same guys. So that's my that would be mm. my only uh, concern about the offensive line. But um, as you said, listen, I'm I'm of the thing about Sam Darnold, and this is what I wanted to call about. Um, mm-hmm. I I love the fact that I've told you previously that I'm I want Sean Deshaun Watson. I still feel that way. But if it came okay. down to Sam Darnold and, and Zach Wilson, I'm going with Sam Darnold. This is the reason why. <laughs> this is the reason why, okay? Uh, Sam Darnold, if you look at Sam Darnold's college and you look at uh, Zach Wilson, I haven't seen Zach yeah. Wilson play against anybody that's, you know, strategizing and the real NFL players on the other side. Yes, he can fit into a, a – a, um, a uh, West Coast system, but so can Bubby Brister. You know, we don't know who he is. At least Sam Darnold is. At least Sam Darnold is. Is you know, we know what he can do. And you're absolutely right. If you if you give him Juju Smith Schuster, you trade down and build around him. I think that's the best option um, at this point. That's the best, and that's the only option. And another thing is that. Do we really want to see Jeff Vance, another rookie quarterback, running around? I don't want to see that, you know. And 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 that's that's the thing that people people forget. He said, get Zach Wilson and get Justin Fields. Well, you bring them in, you're gonna bring them the same thing. They're gonna be running around, running for their life. I mean, it, it, we're almost stuck with them, to be honest with you. You know. Look, and I hear you. He brought out the Bubby Brister. I, I didn't say it. <laughs> I didn't say it, Chris. You know, don't, don't, don't be coming after me because I didn't say that. Anybody that listens, do not tweet me. Don't be hitting me up saying, Joe, you said, no, I did. But listen, here we go. go here we go. You know, we're going to go there. Look, I hear what you're saying. I, I, and like I said, you know, I think we need to shore up the offensive line as well. And you brought up a great point not having a young quarterback running for his life yet again. But my question for you, and this is going to be my last question before I let you go, is, are you concerned yep. about Joe Douglas going in free agency and being conservative like he was last year? Are you worried that he won't do what it takes to, you know, spend the cash to bring in those big time free agents that will want to get paid? I think he's going to be he, – he has a set of price for, for free agency and free agents, and he's going to stick to that. But, this, but ultimately, okay. I'm, 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 a, I'm the – if we don't get to Deshaun Watson, I'm of the point of trading down all the way down – uh, to maybe the 23rd, 24th pick and just grab an offensive mm. lineman and, 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 and position players in the second, third round and just, you know, bringing in 12 or 15 guys and, and building the team that way. I mean, ultimately, um, this is a rebuild. <laughs> you know, yeah, you got to yeah. face the facts, man. This is a rebuild, man. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of fans don't think that, but <laughs> you just brought up an uh, excellent point. That, that is the absolute truth. Yeah, we are still in a rebuild. But listen, Chris, I want to thank you for calling in, my man. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? All right, bro. Thank you. All right, you have a good night. Listen, Chris calling in with, with the big facts. A lot of people don't want to think about that. You know what I mean? We're still in a rebuild. We're still trying to figure out what's going on here. We got a lot of stuff. We got, you know, we got capital. We got cash. You know, we can we can do some things here, but we're still, you know, trying to figure things out. So I'm going to keep getting to these lines. You know what I'm saying? Next guy, I'm going, my old Jets fan, man. This is my old guy coming in. Salute to you, my man. Listen, 862, I'm coming directly to you. Look, I want to get your thoughts. First off, I want to thank you for calling in. And I want to get your thoughts on this offensive line, my friend. What do you think about this? Are you getting rid of Alex Lewis and Greg Van Roten? Um, not really. Um, at this point, I'm thinking about what we're going to do with another two picks so that we can trade down and maybe get uh, uh, a Slater, uh, Ravon Slater. Because okay. at this so, point, so... no, I, I'm, I'm only going to let you know that uh, Penny Sewell, it would be my pick. I, I would have taken, um, you know, it, you know, people don't appreciate the guard. They don't appreciate the tackle. 
Uh, in the long run, if Penny Sewell is the number one pick of this draft, I would take him. After taking hmm. Beacon Beckton, we would have two tackles that would be the best in the league. And then at that point, we would be committed to uh, Sam Darnold. And at this point, after watching him, he's not getting better because he's not going to get a good, good coaching. So I would take uh, Penny Sewell with the number two pick, uh, switch him and put Beckton at right tackle. Imagine that. Put him at right tackle. And then probably tackle uh, Alex Leatherwood uh, later in the draft or somebody like that. And then we would have the best offensive one in the league, and Sam Darnold would be able to be uh, trained to be a better quarterback because he has all the talent. He's got all the arm talent anybody's ever seen is that he was playing with the worst coaching staff in the history of the NFL. Yeah, damn. I mean, you're com- you're coming in with takes. I know a lot of people that look at that number two pick and different things that you can do. But if you think that we could get, so are you, you're taking uh, Penny Sewell at, are you taking Sewell probably at number two, or are you trying to trade down within a certain range to get him, or what are you doing? So you're, are, where are you taking him at? Well, th- to be honest with you, um, a couple of years ago, when the the Giants took Saquon Nelson, I wanted to quote Nelson, and here's the point. You don't really get points for drafting a guard. You really don't. But Quentin Nelson's a Hall of Famer. If he keeps up with his career, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, if no one's willing to trade me down to, let's say, the five pick, um, which would be something like, uh, is that Cincinnati? Who's got the five pick? Cincinnati? I believe, yeah, I believe it is uh, Cincinnati. Yeah, it is Cincinnati. It's Cincinnati. And I think Atlanta's at four, and Philly, I think, is at, like, after that. Okay, so you know Atlanta's not going to take a lineman. You know that mm-hmm. um, they're not going to do it. The point I'm trying to make is you take the pay- best player available. Just imagine Penny Sewell, the, 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 the offensive lineman of the – Last 10 years with Mekon Becton, we would have an offensive line that would be superior to everybody else. I want to quote Nelson. Yeah, absolutely. We would – I, I mean, we would, those, those two guys, uh, those two bookends, we definitely have – you know, if, if Sowell turns out to be, you know, that generational tackle that other people, you know, uh, analysts around the league believe that he's going to be, we would definitely have an, a formidable offensive line. But the, the question would still be the pressure from the interior because Greg Van Roten and Alex Lewis have not really shown that they can handle that. So there'll just be issues there. And I think we can sure that up, though, in free agency and kind of fixing that situation there. So that's why I think you would probably have to move on from Van Roten. And you can do that in the draft as well because there's guys in the draft that you can sure that up with. But um, this, is, this is my final question for you before I have to let you go because the lines is buzzing right now. I know that there may be some other guys in free agency that you're looking at, that you're saying, hey, there might be, you know, might be a guy that you want to tag in for free agency as far as wide receiver, guys you want to go after. Are you concerned that, that Joe Douglas will not be aggressive in this year's free agency, that he'll be very conservative? I went over this with, um, when you mentioned this on your prior show, and I didn't call it, mm-hmm. so I'm going to apologize. Mm-hmm. There's nobody in the wide receiver um, uh, free agency draft that I'd be concerned with son. Okay. Why receiver okay. is the most overrated unless you have Randy Moss or Jerry Rice. It's 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 the the what I call the the cherry on top. Okay. Now, okay. You have to understand a great uh, the, the New York the the New York Giants when they beat the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl, had Mark Ingram and Stephon Baker as their wide receivers. Like, no, yeah, look, I, I hear you. But this, the, the, the offense, I mean, the, the league right now has, has changed. This is a very offensively driven league. This is a passing league. This is a league where you need guys that are going to be able to catch the football. Point blank, period. And I understand what All you're right. saying. You may so, think that wide receivers are overrated. But let me tell you something. If you don't have somebody, hell, look at us. 
<laughs> we have an issue right, so, there so, at wide receiver. We so have issue. We have a lack of weapons. So, the, who is the best wide receiver in the Broncos uh, on the Buccaneers this year? Uh, it's Chris Godwin or Mike Evans, actually. Yeah, Mike yeah, Evans, you could argue, is probably the best. But Chris Godwin is phenomenal. They have two excellent oh, wide good. receivers Why out there. Mike, Mike was, was high drafted? in the first, and Chris Godwin was in the third. In the third, we actually still no, drafted Chris Godwin. Good. He was drafted third in the third. So he's phenomenal. Okay, great. Phenomenal. The year before that, uh, who's the best? Uh, Tariq Hill on the, uh, on the Kansas City Chiefs. Where was he drafted? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, look, where you guys are drafted, there's a lot of guys that have been drafted high in the first that are great, great wide receivers, you know, in this league. But I hear your take and I hear what you're saying, but I got to get to the rest of these callers. I just think that, you right, know, brother. we definitely need to target wide receivers as well. I my time with you. Good luck. Yeah, absolutely. All right, you have a good night, all right? You too. Hey, listen, the guys are bringing the takes. They're bringing fire. Listen, we got one more call we're going to get to, 914 914- I'm going to come directly to you. Please quickly give me your take because we've got very little time left here. I want to thank you for calling in tonight. Give me your thoughts about this Jets offensive line and the assessment of it. Are you moving on from Greg Van Roten and Alex Lewis? Pretty much, yes. And all, yeah, pretty much. We need to get guard help. We don't right now need tackle help. Makes more sense for the Jets to draft a project right tackle in the mid rounds and develop him because Fant is fine right now. Fant, I think we can roll with mm. Fant. I'm targeting in my ranking. Uh, my two big guys are Sheriff Thune and Sheriff in that exact order. Mm, okay. So my final question for you before I let you go, and again, I want to thank you for calling in, is what is your cap for Thune? How much are you willing to pay? How much are you willing to, you know, go to before you move on and say, hey, this is just too much? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what the market is, but I, I definitely – Let's I say 18 – if he asked you for $18 million, would you do it? i consider it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, look, I respect you, man. I respect that take. I want to thank you for calling in, my friend. I hope to hear from you next show. All right. Listen, we we had a fire show tonight. Look, I want to thank everybody for calling in. Salute to all the savages in the chat, every single one of y'all, man. Absolutely love going back and forth with people. I want to, again, I want to thank everyone for calling in. This is fire. This is a fire. Listen. Listen, I'm about to close this out. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, let me get some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. I'm also on Twitter as well at YoungJ000. That's three zero. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you right back. You want to troll me? No issues. I am the troll that lives under the bridge and I will have my Donald jersey on, okay? I'm hoping he's here next season as a starting quarterback. That's what I'm hoping. But I'll, I'm going to have that jersey on until I hear otherwise, all right? You know what I'm saying? So I'm also on YouTube as well at Long Beach Joe Jets. Long Beach Joe Jets, okay, on YouTube. Subscribe to that. Turn on your notifications when I post content you folks can be in the know. Give me a thumbs up. Again, everyone, please thumbs up the streams as well. Um, and if you want to troll me on there as well, hey, hit me up. Troll me. I'll go right back and forth to you in the comments. I'll troll you right back, no issues. And when you folks see me in person, all right, when you see me, you know, it is arms out, chest open, free hugs for everyone. The hugs will remain free, folks, for all times, all right? You know, I want to thank everyone for watching. You folks have the, you know, you folks are the absolute best. I'm telling you, without you folks, I'm absolutely nothing. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to me and call in and go back and forth with me about football. I love my Jets fans. Love going back and forth with everybody. So you folks have a good one, all right? Peace. Yeah.